please join us as we go into worship this morning. We're going to be singing about being happy this morning. We're going to sing about God just blessing us in every single day. The fact that we woke up this morning, the fact that he gave us another chance of life, the fact that we had food to eat, we had tea to drink, and we're here to worship. <laughs> Amen.
So we're going to keep giving him all the glory. To God be the glory, great things he has done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son. Sing to God. To God be the glory. stand right next to me and just start off the song when I think about the Lord and all that he's done for me it just makes me want to cry out hallelujah and give him honor and give him glory for he is a good God and he is worthy to be praised do I have a witness out there amen 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 when I feel Think of 
and makes me want to shout amen all the glory and all the honor and all the praise praise God that we are able to be together in the sanctuary today happy Sabbath everyone and I'm just so I'm just so happy to say that church is open amen and for those of you online who would like to join us for our 1130 service this morning please we're waiting for you we would love to fellowship with you just don't forget to to register yourself online and as usual we are all masked here in the sanctuary to keep everyone safe and I just I just have to say this aloha beautiful on behalf of my family and I listen church I'm still living on that mountaintop experience of last Saturday and I, I just want to personally thank each of you 
and you out there, my church family, who, who came last Saturday in support of my commissioning. And we are just so blessed to be a part of Plantation Seventh-day Adventist Church. And last Sabbath, my entire family truly felt the blessing and anointing of the Lord. And we, we, we've just been riding on the high the whole week, uh, even now. And so we just want to say thank you for loving us and for coming to support and for truly being a part of our family. We love you with all our hearts. Today, I would like to um, tell you that we have Care for the Homeless again at 2 o'clock p.m. in downtown Fort Lauderdale. So please come and support that. We will also have Care for the Homeless next Sabbath as well. And so the Friday before, next Friday, we will be preparing. So we invite all of you, youth and adults, to come and help prepare the packets that are needed to be going out. So that will be next Friday at 7 p.m. And we'll be going out again um, next Saturday at 7 p.m. to care for the homeless. We have a great big event. If you haven't heard yet, we have a great big event, which is our community health fair. But before I talk to you about that, I would like to point your attention to a video that we have to show you. in the United States have hypertension. There are 96 million American adults who have pre-diabetes. That's one in three adults. Of those 96 million, more than eight out of 10 do not even know they have it. If these individuals with pre-diabetes don't make lifestyle changes, many of them could develop type two diabetes within five years. More than two-thirds of adults in the United States are overweight and obese. In 2020, nearly one in five U.S. adults were struggling with a mental illness. That's 52.9 million people. Maybe you're one of these people, or maybe you know someone struggling with a lifestyle disease. The good news is you can even prevent or sometimes reverse these and other conditions through a transformation in lifestyle. On July 31st, starting at 10 a.m., the Plantation Seventh-day Adventist Church presents Living Your Best Life Community <laughs> Health Fair. The event will focus on New Start. New Start is a physician-monitored, scientifically researched lifestyle change program based on eight fundamental principles proven to help you achieve optimum wellness. Nutrition, exercise, water, sunlight, temperance, air, rest, and trust. Free health screenings will be provided to determine if you are at risk of certain lifestyle diseases. You will learn practical ways to lower body fat. Receive valuable information on the importance of things like water, exercise, rest, and stress management. Enjoy delicious plant-based food from local food trucks and food vendors. There will be cooking demonstrations by a renowned executive chef. But the fun doesn't stop there. There will be music, live entertainment, and a kid's fun zone featuring bounce houses, climbing walls, and activities for all ages. Don't miss this event, July 31st, starting at 10 a.m. Come and join us for a day of food, fun, health, and wellness at Plantation Central Park. Church, isn't this exciting? Oh, come on, isn't this an exciting event? This is the first time we will be doing an event of this size for, for on behalf of the Plantation Seventh-day Adventist Church for our community. And so we have this exciting flyer here. I'm just going to read real quick, but then I'm going to interview Elder Nick here. We have free health screenings 
pulmonary function, diabetes screening, age profile, dental screening, hello, vision and eye health. And then we have food trucks, vendors, cooking demonstrations, and other free entertainment. I'm not going to read out the free entertainment because I need you all to go and get one of these pamphlets. But Elder Nick, Elder Nick, tell us a little bit more about what to look forward to on this health fair. Good morning. Thank you, Pastor Jen. Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. So you guys over the last few weeks have been hearing about this health fair that we're uh, going to be putting on for the city of Plantation. I got to tell you, as excited as we are here, what's amazing is what God has already started doing in the city. So as we've just begun our little bit of promotion, we haven't even really turned open, open up the spigot yet. What's been happening this week is outside organizations are starting to email the church. Hey, we see what you guys are doing. How do we get involved? So we've had in the last week, three other non-for-profit organizations have called and says, we work with kids, we work with people with autism, we work with uh, these uh, mental health. We want to be a part of what you're doing. Amen. And I don't know if you remember, during the pandemic, we spoke about this, that when the pandemic ended and when we came back, we did not want to be the same church stuck inside our walls, just talking to each other. We wanted to go get involved in the community. So we're reaching out to the community and what we're asking for is for you guys to come with us. And if you see this uh, slide right here, you see how it says we need volunteers. In order for this to happen, we need 100 volunteers so no one person sits from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Right now, we're about 50 volunteers short. 50 volunteers short, we only have a few weeks and today is the first training day. So if you have not signed up yet, if you feel that you can come and give us an hour and smile and just say hi to someone and to chat with a little kid and to say hi to a mom or a dad. That's all we're asking. Sign up in the lobby or actually we don't have that QR code today, but go in the lobby and sign up and we'll get you connected. The other thing you're going to see right here is a volunteer training. Again, that's happening at 3.30 today. So if you want to stay for lunch, we will have lunch after second service. If not, come back at 3.30. And we're going to explain everything that you'd be asked to do. Um, and we've got people coming from other churches to do some of that training. And I think there might be one more slide. I'm not sure if there is. And this is something that's super important. So let's say you're not able to come and volunteer on that day because you're working and you can't get engaged. One of the things we're promoting in the community is that we're going to be giving away free backpacks and school supplies to the first hundred kids or parents that come along. We have backpacks, but we do not have school supplies right now. So if you take a look there, you'll see the different things we're looking. What we're asking our church to do is to help us, and we're going to have a collection box in the lobby. And if you want to drive by in the week in front of the school, there will be a box in front of the school door. We're going to ask you to pick up some of these supplies, drop it in that box. And the week before the fair, we're going to ask you to come to church, and we want to pack those backpacks. I'm sorry, the day before, we're going to pack those backpacks, and we want to put a note in there. We want to put an encouraging note saying, we believe in you. God loves you. We love you. We want to make an impact in this community. And with your help, with your help, we're convinced this is going to be one of the most amazing experiences this community has ever had. And they're going to ask us to do it over and over and over again. So, Elder Nick, you said 50 volunteers short. It's not difficult for a plantation, no, right? No, it's not. No, it's not. No, but it's not. I, I do want to mention something. Out of those 50 volunteers, we're looking for as many as 30 medical professionals. And the reason why, ah. most of these things can be done by anyone. We're going to have eight uh, health stations. 80% can be done by anyone with no medical background at all. But there's a few of them that we're looking for medical professionals to be there, mm -hmm. to help supervise, to monitor. And then if someone has a question, someone has a little bit more knowledge. So do you know a nurse? Do you know a nurse practitioner, a doctor, a, a, a chiropractor, a physician, a physician's assistant? Whatever it is, we need you. We really, really need you. And just this one day, we have the ability to impact hundreds, thousands of people in just six to eight short hours. And Pastor Dan, can I say something else? Yes. You guys saw that video. You saw a new start. And while we're doing this thing on that day, we're going to do this on that day, but that day we're going to be inviting those people into a long-term lifestyle program where we will go through New Start with them. And we're going to challenge the church. You guys are going to hear about this later. There's going to be an 18-day challenge to wellness. So we're going to meet these people, greet them, and invite them to come into community and relationship with us, maybe in our fellowship hall, maybe online. But that's what we want to do. So pray for us, please. I'm asking you guys on a Friday afternoon, pray. 
if you feel really strong, fast for us on a Friday morning and pray about the people that will come to this health fair. Yes, we're doing all of the physical work, but this is really a spiritual battle, right? And we fight those spiritual battles on our knees. So I don't know if you would, who could commit to every Friday morning praying and maybe fasting for half the day that the right people will come to this fair? I truly believe that God has already in mind, even though they don't know it, he's knocking on the doors of their hearts and saying, hey, go and volunteer. So if you feel that knock on your heart, please go outside and volunteer yourself, and, and even if for just an hour. And if you can't volunteer, we have backpacks that you can contribute to. And so we want to thank you in advance because we know that come July 31st and after, there will be a lot to testify of God's great goodness that comes from the results of our health fair. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for the love of our church, Father, for the love that Plantation has to reach out, Father. You've seen all our efforts over the years and even continuously now as we reach out to our less than privileged brothers and sisters down in downtown Miami and in downtown Fort Lauderdale. But Father, this is now we're approaching a tip of an iceberg that could blow up for you, Father. And so we ask, Lord, that not only do you touch those to come to the health fair, but you touch the hearts of those who you want to be there to help spread your word through their different talents of giftedness, Father. And Father, we ask your blessing, not only over the health fair, but of, over all the activities that we are planning towards this, Father, and our regular activities here at church. Father, may you bless today, Father. May you dwell with us in this sanctuary, Father, and may everyone here know the peace and comfort of your presence, Father. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Guys, if you need something to share with friends in the lobby table, you'll find these cards. You can take a bunch of these cards and hand them out. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning, boys and girls. I see lots of you this morning. I'm excited. It's your favorite time of the service. It is children's story time. So please come up, come up, come up. I'd like to see you. Everybody, all the boys, all the beautiful girls, all the beautiful boys, please come up. And I see that Vanessa just had a baby. <laughs> She's like, no. <laughs> Good morning, everyone, and happy Sabbath. So before we get started, I'd like one of you to pray for me. Who wants to pray? There's no volunteer. You don't want to pray? Do you want to pray for me? Do you want to pray for me? Okay, he'll pray for me. Thank you. Dear Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for always being with us. We thank you for bringing us here safely. Bless that we will learn something new and have a good time. Amen. Amen. So, boys and girls, I have something to show you this morning. It is right here. Do you like to know what I have under this? Do you? Boop, 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 boom. Oops. Ta-da! What are these, boys and girls? Good job! Mangoes. Yes, they are mangoes. They are beautiful. What is a mango? Can you tell me? Who knows what's a mango? A fruit. You're so smart. Exactly. It is a fruit. And mangoes are very healthy. They are packed with fiber, they are packed with vitamin C, they have some vitamin A, they are very, very, very good for you. So it's mango season right now, so you shall ask your parents to get you some mangoes, okay? It's very good. 
Usually, usually. So I have three mangoes here. I want to pick one of them. Do you know if my mangoes are good? Do you know if they are good? You don't know. Okay, exactly. We don't know. So if I need to know if my mangoes are good, what should I do? Because mangoes, they can be very sweet. They can be kind of like sour. They can be rotten. They can be smooth. So for me to find out if my mango is good, what do I need to do? Anybody knows? Yes? You want to say something? Try it. Go oh, yes. You guys are the best. You have to try it. I have to try my mango. I have to eat my mango. I have to taste my mango, right? And when I do that, that's when I'll know. So let me try one of my mangoes. Let's see. Let's take this one. Oh, hopefully it's good. Let, let me see. Mm, 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 mm. Ooh. It is sweet. It is good. It is juicy. I love this mango. So I only knew that my mango was good because I tried it. I tasted it. I ate it. Guess what, boys and girls? It is the same thing for Jesus. For you to know if Jesus is good, you have to try it. You have to test him. You have to experience him. You have to have a relationship with him, okay? That's all you'll know. I know you come to church every day, and then you hear the pastor, you know, the, 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 pastor, the, 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 the pastor says every day, oh, God is good, right? Mom and dad, they tell you all the time that God is good, right? But the Bible says in Psalm 34, verse 8, taste and see that the Lord is good. And that's our memory verse for today. You're going to repeat after me. Psalm 34, verse 8. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Now I know that you guys are very smart. Can you tell me how you can taste and see that the Lord is good? How can you do that? How? Well, you just have to have a relationship with him. You just have to talk to him. You have to pray to him when you have a problem. So once upon a time, there was a lady. And she was very, very, very sick. She had an issue of blood for 12 years. And that lady, she went to all the doctors in town. She spent all the money. She was never healed. She was just still sick. But one day, she heard of a man. His name was Jesus. So she heard of him, but she didn't know him right so guess what she had to do she had to try him she had to test him she had to taste jesus so one day she got up and she walked and you know jesus back then was very popular because he was healing all the sick people he was making miracles so there was a huge crowd around jesus so she walked and she walked as far as she could through the crowd and she tasted Jesus. You know what she did? She just, she touched him. She touched Jesus. And guess what happened? As soon as she touched Jesus, she was healed, right? She was healed and she was happy. So boys and girls, this is how you taste Jesus, okay? So I know you hear all, of, I'm telling you Jesus is good because I've experienced him. But for you to know, you have to have a relationship with Jesus. You have to talk to him. You have to test him. You have to pray to him. And you have to test him. Because remember, taste and see that the Lord is good. Very good job, boys and girls. Who wants to pray for me now to finish? No one else wants to pray? No, nobody wants to pray, but since we have an elder here, she will pray for me. And she's like going to, she's not happy with me. <laughs> she will. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this uh, wonderful children's story, which reminds us that if we taste and if we touch you, we will see that you are good. Thank you for being such a loving Heavenly Father. We bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
about everyone, how new for the offering call. It is so amazing. It is so amazing. It is so amazing to see how everything are tied together. When you give, guess what? It's amazing for your health. As we can see, studies show that giving can actually boost your physical and mental health. Good news in today's world, where many people are suffering from the emotional complications of global pandemic. From volunteering at a soup kitchen to committing to raise money for a specific charity, health benefits associated with giving can include lower blood pressure. Could you believe this? Increase self-esteem, less depression, lower stress level, longer life, and greater happiness and satisfaction. So that's why it's so I ask you to be volunteering for the health fair. Because when, after you come back from that event, you feel so good, those study back it up. He said, there's just something about the delight of gift giving that makes us feel good, that there is actually science back it up. They said, research say that people who give, the others have lower blood pressure than people who don't. And then researchers also say that people who give their time to help others, to community, or organizational uh, involvement have greater self-esteem. Giving can help you live longer. Accordingly, one study to one study, people who were 55 and older who volunteer for two or more are 45% less likely to die over a five-year period that those who didn't volunteer, even accounting to many factors, including age, exercise, general health, and negative habits. Another study found similar numbers of elderly people who, gave, who give help to their friends, relatives and neighbors who give emotional support to their spouses versus those who didn't. And he said, feeling happier. He said that, there is evidence that during giving behavior, human secret feel-good chemicals in our brains, such as serotonin, a mood mechanic chemical, dopamine, a feel-good chemical, and oxytocin, a compassion and bonding, and, and bonding chemical. When you look at the functional MRIs of subjects who give the various charity, Scientists has found it that giving stimulates the mesolimbic pathway, which is the reward center of the brain, releasing endorphins and creating what is known as the hyper high. And the other highs, like this is none of the addictive. Two, so go ahead and ish out of the someone in need. Decide what charities you would like to give and identify, identify opportunities to give back in your community. You, your mental and physical health will thank you and so will the people you need. So like the event on July 31st, that will be awesome. It will give you such a joy when you're giving. I can always say giving is better than receiving. Okay? So... Thank you so much. Let's uh, pray for the, for the offering. Father in heaven, you have everything, put everything together for us. You teach us to be compassionate, to be kind, and to give. But above all things, all belong to you. And after we give, we feel so good. It is, uh, it is, uh, it is scientifically proven that when we give, when we help others, Father, we are more happier. So, Father, bless the offering. Help to touch people's heart to donate. And those who cannot give, please help them to give. Bless them so that your, your, your word, your message 
can go to all the world. And this way you will come soon. We ask you all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen.
thank you for always being my savior. Thank you. Thank you for being all we need at any time, Lord. Thank you for always being that savior. Yo no. 
Jesus, and by his grace and mercy, I am saved. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's prayer time, everybody. Uh, but before we pray, I uh, just want to share a couple of things um, that the Lord placed in my heart this morning. Uh, the Lord drew my attention to Jeremiah, and uh, Jeremiah, as many of you know was called to be a prophet of God and his name means God will uplift and he was also known as the weeping prophet um, in Jeremiah 1 5 it says before I formed you in the womb I knew you this is God speaking to Jeremiah before you were born I sanctified you I ordained you a prophet to the nations you and I may not have been called to be prophets, but nevertheless, we are called. You are chosen. First Peter 2 9 says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. The promises of God in the book of Jeremiah are promises given to you and to me. Jeremiah 29, 11 to 13, it says, For I know the thoughts I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me, and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. In Jeremiah 33, 3, it says, <clears throat> Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. And finally, in Jeremiah 32 verse 27 says, Behold, I am the Lord God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? I submit to you today that nothing is too hard for our God. Because our God is the God of all gods. He's the King of all kings. He's the Lord of all lords. And so there's nothing that he can't handle. I invite you to kneel with me or if you feel like coming uh, to the front, we will go to our God in prayer. <clears throat> oh God, you have been our dwelling place through all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth or ever the world was formed, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You are God and there is none like you. You are the sovereign of the universe. You are mighty God, the Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, God with us, the Sovereign of the Universe, the Mighty One, our conquering King. It is to you that we bow this morning. 
to give you thanks and praise for all that you've done. It is to you we bow this morning because we know that when we are in trouble, we can run to you. We bless your name this morning, oh God. We praise you, we magnify you because you're worthy to be praised, Lord. We are so grateful, Father, that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a, a holy nation. You've called us out. We are the church, the called out ones. You've called us from darkness into your marvelous light. It is indeed an honor and a privilege to serve you. It is indeed an honor and a privilege to be called children of the Most High God. Thank you, O oh God, for calling us from darkness to light. Thank you, O oh God, for your involvement in our lives. God, we ask you this morning to forgive us. Before I move any further, Lord, if there's anything in me that will hinder this prayer, Lord, remove it. And then I pray for your people, Lord, those listening online and those who are here. Lord, if we have committed any, any sin, we ask, Lord, that you'd remove it. Father, we ask that you hide us behind your cross. Father, this morning, we just want to say thank you for all that you've done. And this morning, we bring to you, Lord, our petitions. Father, we know that we're living in a world of sin. And with sin, there's all kinds of chaotic things that are happening in our world we know that we're still living in a time where this pestilent COVID is still raging and people are getting sick and some people are still unfortunately dying as a result and so God we know that you are the great healer so father we're asking in the name of Jesus for those Lord who are sick and afflicted with COVID, Lord, with diabetes, Lord, with hypertension, Lord, with congestive heart failure, with any kind of sickness, oh God, we know that you're the one who can bring healing because you are healer. So Father, I ask that you touch that one, that man, that woman, that boy, that girl, that is sick and afflicted, Lord God, I pray that you'd raise them up, that you deliver them from that body of sickness. We ask because we know that there's nothing too hard for our God, and we ask it in faith. And then, Lord, you have your other children who are struggling financially, Lord, with inflation. Some may have lost jobs. And they just don't know how they're going to meet, make ends meet. They're struggling, Lord. They may have jobs, but they're still finding it difficult, Lord, to make ends meet. Lord, we know that you are the great provider. You are Jehovah Jireh. And so we know that you are able to make things happen in their lives. Lord, I pray favor over that one who is struggling right now, that you would bring them out, oh God, that you provide for their every need. Because we know that you will not forsake the righteous. His seed will not go begging bread. That is what your word said, Father, and your word is true. Your word is true. Your promises are yes and yes. Your promises are yes and amen. And so, oh God, we need you to show up. And let them see how real you are. You've been so good. You've been better to us, Lord, than we've been to ourselves. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the things that you've protected us from. Day in and day out, as we've gone throughout the course of this week, my brother Nick shared yesterday about how he was driving his vehicle and how uh, the... the, the um, other part to his truck uh, uh, was uh, detached. He could have gotten an into an accident, but you've protected him. We thank you, O oh Lord, from you, for saving us from the things that we totally unaware of. 
because you're that kind of God. You take care of your own, and so we're so grateful. We're thankful. Father, there are so many other needs. There are those who are struggling with depression, those who are struggling with, with anxiety, mental health issues. Oh God, I pray that you touch their minds and their hearts. And I pray that you'd bring about restoration. Make them whole, oh God. Make them whole. Father, I pray for our youth. Some of them, their bodies are here, but their minds are elsewhere. They're in need, Lord, of a personal relationship with you. As are some of the adults as well. Oh God, I pray today that you'd be with our young people. Help them to know that you are real. Help them to know that you take great interest in them. Help them to know that you love them and you want to save them. That your plans for them are great. Help them, oh God, to get into a right relationship with you, Lord. Protect our youth. Protect, protect, Father, our children. You said that you will save our children. So, oh God, we just ask, Lord, that you hold on to your promises. Because, again, as I've mentioned, there are yes and amen. We thank you, oh God. Oh God, I pray for the one who will be bringing the bread of life this morning, Pastor McCoy. Lord, may this not be another sermon, but, oh God, may it be a word directly from the throne room of heaven. Speak through him, oh God. And, Father, I pray that you'd ready our hearts for that in which you'd have us to receive today. We thank you, O oh God, that you've heard this prayer, and we thank you that you've answered. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everybody. It is good to be in the house of the Lord with you again. Uh, I can, I want to see your faces, so I'm just going to ask them to flip on the house lights so I can uh, look in your, your cheerful faces. It's a blessing for us to be together again in the house of the Lord. Won't you say amen? Uh, before I begin with my sermon, I must take time out to thank God first and foremost for the family of God that the Plantation Church is. Um, since uh, my wife and I came to Plantation, we've had many challenges in terms of deaths in our families. But I think God knew what God was doing when we were placed here at Plantation. I've had a very supportive pastoral team in Pastor Rose and Pastor Jen uh, when I lost my sister. And the, the eldership team under the leadership of Elder Mo, uh, I felt the support and the love of the plantation um, leaders. Uh, Elder Angela and the prayer ministry team. Um, Dr. Hugh Allen and Elder Mike Adden. Um, the men's ministry leaders, they, they were very supportive. I felt the collective support of the Plantation Church. And uh, from our hearts to yours, I want you to know that we, we love you, we felt your love, and we thank God for you. We thank God for you. I also want to thank my wife for being my strength when I couldn't stand in those moments of grief. Thank you, Sharice. I love you. And I want to thank my little boy, uh, Kevin, 
for bringing laughter in those moments of sadness. And, and that's what life is about. It's about those moments when we can find people to lean on, when we don't have the strength to stand on our own. And so I thank God for a loving church family and for a loving wife and a joyful child. Uh, with that said, you know that here at Plantation, we are on a journey driven by a vision to refocus on our purpose. And that's our biblical purpose of loving God, loving each other, and making disciples. And so at Plantation here, we go through a cycle um, each quarter with our trying to fulfill our biblical purpose. Each month of the, of, the, of the quarter, we go through one of those um, elements of our biblical purpose. And as we do that, we are trying to fulfill and go through our discipleship cycle, our process, which includes connecting. We say connect, serve, grow, and go. And so in this quarter, which began with, well, it has began with this month, July, we are focusing on service and serving and serving. And this month... Uh, we are going to be in, in, in the plantation park, uh, focusing on serving the community with, with our health event, health fair. And so it was mentioned earlier, but I want to emphasize that we need all hands on deck. We can't do it without you, and uh, we need you, we need you, we need you. So please volunteer. But yes, this month we are focusing on, on health, and our major ministry event um, is the health fair. And with this focus on health, we are talking about, we are engaging ministry under the theme, My Body, God's Temple. It's, we are acknowledging the fact that we are not our own and we are stewards of this body that God has given unto us. Right? Um, when you see that sign on the screen, it means someone needs to put on a mask other than the preacher. All right? <laughs> All right. Um, right, so... We are talking about health, um, my body, but we are recognizing that it's God's temple. God has given us a stewardship of this body. And I want to focus today on, uh, in a, reflect briefly from the biblical point of view on, on, on mental health. Um, I don't proclaim to be a, me a mental health professional, but uh, I will proclaim what the Bible says and how we can move towards mental health. And so with that, I will be speaking uh, on the, from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 14, verses 25 through 27. And uh, it reads like this. I have said these things to you while I am with you. Jesus speaking with his disciples. But the advocate... The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. I've entitled my sermon today, Peace Like No Other. Pray with the preacher and for the preacher. Loving God, we acknowledge today and we recognize and confess that though we, this is our body, sometimes we fail to recognize it's your temple. But we pray today that your words will bless our hearts, our minds, and that we can indeed find the peace that we need for our mental health. In Jesus' name, amen. Peace like no other. The final words of the text I just read was an admonition from Jesus. He was very strong in this admonition. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. Jesus is, is encouraging his disciples. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Come on, Jesus. You know it's not as easy as you're saying it. 
Most of you here sitting before me know that life is filled with troubles and fears that fill our hearts and our minds. And the thing about these troubles and these fears is that they stir what one preacher calls two false prophets within us. The first false prophet is anxiety. Anxiety says, worry about everything. Oh God, this is happening, that is happening, and I can't do it, and I give up. I, my mind is troubled, my body gives in. Anxiety says, worry about everything. And then the second false prophet says, whose depression says, care about nothing. I go in my shell, in this dark place, I hide from the world, I hide from God's grace, and I give in, I give up. Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. But then when we find ourselves in challenges and difficulties, these two false prophets arise. Anxiety, depression, worry about everything, care about nothing. And we find ourselves in a limbo. We are crippled with fear, crippled with anxiety, crippled with depression. There are so many things that stirs these emotions and these mental disorders within us. The broken relationship. The difficulty of finding one's purpose. The inflation. The mass shootings. So many things are causing fear and, and challenges within us. And we just can't seem to hold a steady head. But some of us, we are brave enough and, 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 and we, we listen to the first false prophet, worry about everything. And so what we do is, because we sense that God is, is not close to us, we say that, let me take everything in my hand and try to fix this on my own. And then we fail and we can't make it. And then we listen to, we listen to depression who says, care about nothing. And we, we throw in the toilet, towel, that's it, God, I give up. And then there are others who become creative. Let's see what TikTok has to say. L let's hear what Instagram has to say. The prophets of Instagram, TikTok and Facebook. You know, I, I'm guilty of this. I, I, I listen to the prophets of the news. I love the news. And so I love to watch the news, Elamoto, to hear what's going to happen tomorrow. Because there's something about the news that seems to stir hope in us. When we listen to these analysts, they tell us, don't worry because you won't have such an active hurricane season in Florida this year. Uh, don't worry, they... Uh, these decisions that have been made will manage or, or control or curve the inflation. And we hope, we hope that in engaging with the news, it will forecast a tomorrow that is better than today. But how many times have the projections, the news projections of yesterday proved unreliable for today's reality? And how many times today's news projections prove or found futile for tomorrow's expectations? You see, the problem, brothers and sisters, with the prophets of Tic Tac, Facebook, YouTube, and all of these things is that they proclaim the peace of the world. And there's something about the peace of the world that we ought to understand and be aware of. The peace of the world is, it is situational. Write that down. The peace of the world, it is situational. The peace of the world is situational because it depends on the current state of affairs. It is like the, the waves of the sea. When there is no wind, the sea is calm. But as soon as the winds come, then the sea is in an uproar. 
Such it is in our lives. When, when the winds of troubles and trials are calm, we feel at peace. But as soon as the troubles and the trials come, that's the moment we are like the, the, the waves of the sea tossed and turned by the challenges and trials of life. But the problem with leaning on the peace that the world offers, it's that it is situational based on the, the, the state of current affairs. Let me say it another way. The peace of the world is dependent on the absence of problems. I am fine and I am dandy. I am happy once my spouse is happy with me. I am fine and I'm happy when I can pay my bills and have a little overdue. I, I, I feel at peace and I am happy when I can run five kilos like brother. Uh, who beat me in the... In the um, in the race at the sports day. I think brother Danny came in, elder Danny came before me. Yes, elder Danny came in before me, he did. I'm not gonna tell him my age, nor that elder Danny's age, right? But he came in before me, <laughs> right? But, but, but the thing I'm saying is brothers and sisters, is that the peace of the world, it is unreliable, unsatisfying, because it is dependent on the absence of problems. And that is why Jesus, when he is encouraging his disciples, he says to them, peace I give you, not as the world gives. Because Jesus knows that the peace of the world is unsatisfying and unreliable. And Jesus knows that to speak to these prophets that, 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 that rages in us, this, these prophets of anxiety and depression, Jesus knows that we need a peace that only he could give. And thus Jesus says, peace I give you, not as the world gives, but my peace, my peace. And, and you, you've, got to, you've got to pay attention to this thing that Jesus gives. Jesus says, my peace I give you. The peace that Jesus possessed himself. So the peace that Jesus is giving us is the peace that he experienced. It is a peace that carried him through. It, it, this peace, brothers and sisters, is a peace, it, it's not situational, it's not based on the absence of problems in our lives. Rather, they describe this peace as the, the shalom peace. And, and here's something about the shalom peace. It is less about the absence of problems or troubles and more about contentment in the midst of your problems or your troubles. You can tweet that one. Shalom peace is less about the troubles, about the absence of troubles, or the absence of problems, and more about contentment in the midst of my current situation. Ah, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, it's a kind of peace that kept Christ from Mary's womb to Joseph's borrowed tomb. It's a peace that made the eternal, the eternal word take on human flesh and come and dwell among us. It is a peace that kept Christ sleeping in the midst of a storm. It is a, it is a peace that held the, the innocent Christ on a criminal's cross. It is a peace that raised Christ from the dead and brought him to heaven at the right hand of God where he now gives us the gift, the gift of peace. Christ says, I give you my peace. The peace that I have experienced, the peace that, 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 that dwelled within me is the peace I am leaving with you. Yes, Christ's peace, brothers and sisters, is a peace that we all need. This peace is not based on the circumstances of our lives, but it helps us to endure the circumstances of our lives. Well, the peace of the world is unstable and unsatisfying. The peace of Christ is stable, satisfying, and serene. Yes, it's the peace that we all need to survive in this world. And let me say it, the peace of Christ, because you know, when I, when I became a young Christian, I was very excited. And I'm like, man, I'm a Christian now. Pastor, I have a, I have a bulletproof over my body. 
Uh, no bullets of the devil, no, no troubles, no trials, no temptation. Oh, I can walk in the, in the midst of fire and nothing burns me. I am free from all my trials and troubles. It's going to be easy like Sunday morning. It's going to be like a bed of roses from now on end. But what deception. The peace of Christ will not prevent or remove troubles from your lives. But the peace of Christ will keep you in the midst of your troubles. The peace of Christ, when we have it, brothers and sisters, we can endure and we can enjoy all circumstances. Because the peace of Christ does a balancing act. It brings equilibrium between our bad experiences and our good experiences. Yes, when we have the peace of Christ, we can enjoy the sunshine, we can endure the rain. We can enjoy the abundance of supply, and we can enjoy, endure the lack of resources. We can enjoy the benefits of success, and we can endure the fear of failure. We can enjoy the happiness of relationships, and we can endure the brokenness of connections. We can enjoy the pleasures of life, and we can endure the terror of death. We can enjoy the blessings of God, and we can endure the temptations of the devil. When we have the peace of Christ, it brings a balance into our lives. We're, we don't live a naive sense of Christianity. Uh, I'm going to speed it on right here. But, but, but preacher, you are telling me about this peace, this peace that keeps me in the midst of my troubles, this peace that helps me to enjoy good times and endure hard times. But, but how do I get this peace? How do I experience this peace that you're talking about? You're a good salesman. You sell it to me. Now, now tell me how to get it. Well, Jesus when he was leaving, he, he, he was leaving this earth. He was going to the cross. He was preparing his disciples for his departure. He said to them, I'm going to leave, but you're going to have peace. And he says, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send, in whose? In my name, in my character, with my power, with my authority, will be with you and will teach you all things and remind you of all that I have taught you. Now, now I'm going to summarize this quickly. Jesus said the Spirit is going to do two things. One, teach us all things. Two, remind us of what has already been taught. So the Holy Spirit is going to teach us some things about finding peace. Some things that Jesus himself experienced like peace, brothers and sisters, can only be found in a relationship with God. God then, through the Spirit, imbues and permeates the rest of your life with that very peace. So, so, so that's something that the Spirit is teaching someone for the first time. But then the Holy Spirit is also reminding, remember, two, two roles of the Spirit, to teach and to remind. The Spirit is reminding us that in the times when we forget and we are uh, uh, driven about by the voices of anxiety and depression, we ought to remi remind ourselves that we can go back to God and find peace. So the Holy Spirit teaches, and the Holy Spirit reminds. Now I want to just stand in this spot here and avail myself as an instrument of the Holy Spirit to do one of those things. Not to teach you, but to remind you of something. And here's what I want to remind you of. I want to remind you of something that Jesus said to his disciples. Here's what he said in John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that you will have peace. Holy Spirit, you're going to help me preach this thing right here. I have told you these things in order that, for the reason that, you might have peace. And sometimes we forget. But the Holy Ghost has brought me here today and asked me to remind you about something that you should not forget. And here it is. Jesus says, in this 
world, you will have troubles. Oh, whoa, 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 preacher. What are you talking about? Is that what Jesus wants me to, to, to be reminded of? In this world, you will have troubles. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, uh, young people, you're going to take that exam five, four times, but at the sixth time, you are going to pass it. You're going to have troubles in this world. You're going to, have a date, you're going to date a few people and it won't work out because you thought, this was the love of my life. And then your hearts are going to be broken. And young people, you're going to have troubles and trials. You, oh, um, um. Some of you are wrestling with health issues. And you wonder why God, you know, when my sister, and this is, this is a, a commercial, no, not commercial break, but just an insert, an aside. I ask God, why? My little sister, out of all the people in the world, why does this rare uh, um, symptom has to, that exposes her to many cancer, why, why, why her? But, 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 but my Bible tells me, in this world, you will have troubles. You're going to have some problems that you don't know if they walk through the back door or the front door. You are going to have problems in this world. But thanks be to God, Jesus, he didn't stop speaking there. Jesus says, in this world, you will have troubles. But take courage. Oh, help me, Jesus. Thanks be to God. I have overcome this world. The world in which we live, in which all the problems and all the trials and troubles we have experienced, Jesus has overcome all of these trials because he has overcome this world. And now he sits on the right hand of God and is able to give us peace that is like no other. Tell your neighbor, peace that is like no other. I don't know what you're going through today. I don't know what anxiety has told you. I don't know what depression has said to you. But Jesus says, I will give you peace that is like no other. Not as the world gives, I give you, but I give you my peace. The peace that keeps you in the times when you feel like giving up. The peace that keeps you when you feel like throwing in the towel. The peace that keeps you in church when someone in church steps on your toe. Oh, help me, Jesus. Uh, the peace of God is what we need. Can, you, can I hear a church today? Is there somebody in church uh, who knows that all you need right now uh, is the peace of God that is like no other? Yes. Don't listen to depression. Don't listen to anxiety. Because Jesus proclaims here, when Jesus says that he has conquered the world, Jesus declared himself the Prince of Peace. Yes, in that very moment, Jesus declared the world has been conquered. The devil has been conquered. And I am now the Prince of Peace. And all the circumstances, all the trials and troubles of your life, they are under my care and control. And so no matter what you are going through, I can give you peace like no other. When I'm going through my bad moments and I can't see the good times coming, Jesus is going to give you peace that is like no other. When you're in your dark spots and you can't see the light of the tunnel, Jesus is going to give you peace that is like no other. When you're down in the valley and you don't have a mountaintop experience, Jesus is going to give you peace that is like no other. No, I, am I talking to somebody in plantation today? Am I talking to somebody in online church? I say, no matter what you're going through, the peace of God will keep you in your good time and in your bad times because the peace of God is like no other.
going together. You are my strength, strength like no other. You are my strength, strength like no other. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. It is to me. Reaches to me. You are my hope. in and says what you need is peace peace like no other and I am here to give it to you and so if there's someone in church today I don't know what your trouble is I don't know what the issue is but today tune out anxiety tune out depression and hear the voice of God saying come I give you peace that is like no other. If you're online, if you're online, when you go to our website, there is a there is a is, is, is a is a tab. Click it. Next steps. If you're finding yourself needing this peace, go there. There's there's a link for Bible study, for pastoral visit, for for prayer. Go there on our website. Next steps. But if you're in church today, and you want this peace, I invite you just to open your arms just like this, and receive the peace of God. Receive the peace of God right now. Receive the peace of God in the fullness. troubles with eternal world fears. We surrender to you right now, accepting your peace. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we confess that we have, thank you, my sister, for coming forward. God, we know that we have allowed anxiety and depression to speak into our lives, things that are not of your kingdom 
but today in the name of Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit we speak peace in the lives of your people I pray for your daughter who has walked forward God you know what is on her heart and I pray that the peace that surpasses all understanding will cover her in your blood in your name and in the power of your Holy Spirit and therefore others who are in the congregation those who are online I pray Jesus that your peace will relieve the troubled hearts of your people fears the worries the anxieties the depression everything that is keeping your people down in the name of Jesus those chains are broken your people have been set free by the power of your peace we declare it in the name of the Father Son and Holy Spirit that the people of God say peace 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 God bless you God bless you
Good morning and happy Sabbath to all of you, and thank you for joining us for our Sabbath School discussion. I am happy to introduce to you the panelists that I have this morning. On my right is Sister Cassandra Pierre, and on my left is Sister Gertrude Tony. and we will be presenting to you our Sabbath School lesson. Let us pray, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for this time, albeit short, Father, but this time to delve deeper into your word, Lord, to not only learn about you, Father, but to gain a fuller understanding, and Lord, to even fall more deeper in love with you, Father. And so thank you for this time that we can study and share. In your name we pray, amen. I love the title of our lesson, and it says, The Crucibles That Come. When you even hear the word crucible, Sister Gertrude, what comes to your mind when you think of the word crucible? Can you hear me? There you All go. All right. Happy Sabbath after your church. So, Pastor Jenna, when I Think about that word. I see something that they put you in to refine you. you. So Amen. something can get, something different can get through this. Okay, okay. Sister Cassandra, what do you think of when you hear the word crucible? So when I hear that word, I think of a test. Mm. So it's a test that you go to so that you can be refined, so that God can mold you. So that's a crucible. Beautiful. We come to our lesson for Sabbath, beginning with last Sabbath, July 2, and it is entitled, The Crucibles That Come, and it leads us to our Bible verse, which is found in 1 Peter, 1 Peter 4, verse 12 and 13, and it says, Beloved, let me start with number 12. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. How is it possible to rejoice in trial and as we have read or you may have studied, we, we, we talk about crucibles and how chem labs, the, the technicians in the lab, they melt various different materials into a container and depending on what the composite of that substance is, the result will be something that is spitting or melting or fizzing or burning brightly. And so as Sister Gertrude and Sister Cassandra mentioned, a crucible really is a container. And so then in the dictionary, we find that a crucible is one, a vessel used to melt a substance using high heat, two, a severe test, or, or a place or situation where concentrated forces interact to cause or influence or change um, your development. So this is the insight to what happens in our spiritual lives when we are placed in a crucible. And this week we are going to highlight some reasons why we may suddenly find ourselves under pressure and experiencing tests or crucibles in which cause us to change and develop more and grow in character. And when we grow in character, you will know, and you, as you already know, each test that we go through becomes a, defining, a redefining moment of God in our lives. And so now we move on to Sunday, and we are still on the same text. Behold, beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. So what Peter is saying is, don't be surprised. Why, why are you surprised, right, when a trial comes to you? When, you? when you're a Christian, we already know that trials are going to come to us. Now what will happen now is, what is our reaction going to be to the trials that are coming? You wanted to say something? 
Okay. I would like to say something. Yes. Sometimes it takes us by surprise. That's right. We are not ready for the trials. And when it comes on us, it's like, oh, my God. So our reaction is important. And I can share something very quickly. Yes. Allow me, Pastor Jane. Something took me by surprise when it asked, not only me, my husband. We have a, a third child. She got sick when she was three. We came to church with her. Saturday morning, she was okay, completely fine. Sunday morning, she got sick. By Tuesday, we don't know if she would live or, lie, or, or, or die. Mm. Just imagine a three-year-old, what we went through. And after they gave her the medicine, the doctor said, said we have two months. The medicine works on 50% on children. For two months, we, do, we did not know. But you know, it's through this, what she went through, because at, the, at a certain time in the hospital, I said, if I could take her place to suffer for her, mm. I would. Mm -hmm. And this is after being a Seventh-day Adventist. For so many years, I get baptized. I was 13 years old. This is when I truly understand the meaning of the cross. Amen. I had to go to that trial, to that difficulties by my child being sick, to understand the meaning of the cross. Amen. Amen. In Sunday's lesson, it, it, it talks about the surprises of crucibles, that painful crucibles, painful tests come our way. A, a car can be veering across the road into you. You suddenly lose your job. Your, your marriage falls apart. And, but pain is hurtful, right? But it's even worse when it's a surprise when the test is a surprise. And so what Peter is saying is the Greek word for surprise means to be alien or foreign. And Peter is saying to avoid traps that make you believe that ordeals and trials are alien to the Christian experience. We, we, we need to be expecting things to be happening to us, right? And when, when I think about, for instance, um, my journey of, of last year, each, each thing that happened, my, my mother getting into an accident, and then the surgery, and then my, my husband, um, his foot getting infected, as they say, it comes in threes, and we think that, well, okay, once the third thing has happened, we're done. And, and I keep on saying this, and I'll rem ever remember what one member said to me, Pastor Jen, you're going through some crazy and major things right now, and I wonder what's next. And I thought, what's next? And nothing's next. We're, we're, we're good. We're really good. But then surprise, 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 my sister dies. By the time it came to my father, or by, by the time, yeah, by the time it came to my father and my husband's second hospitalization, I, I wasn't surprised anymore. I was expecting. I was expecting that, you know, Satan sees us stand and root ourselves in Jesus. And then he says, I want to see what else is going to take you down. And that is where you reach deep. You reach deep and you say, Father, I know I was not expecting these deaths or these health ailments, but God, I know that you're here. And I will not let the surprise of the enemy take me away from you. And so it's easy. Sunday's lesson says it's easy to put our trials into different boxes we say everything bad is of Satan, everything good is of God. But sometimes, sometimes, do we consider that sometimes the bad things that happen to us could be a result of us, a result of the things that we're doing? So we can't say, you know what, I, I fell into, um, I'm sorry, my husband, I'm going to, call you out, but it's not really. You know, I, I landed into the hospital. He, he has high blood sugar, right? Uh, I landed into the hospital because of an infection in my foot, and oh, 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 diabetes, that's all Satan's. But really, you know, what could have been happening in his diet beforehand? What could he have changed to possibly help him be better, you know, in, in, in his health, health intake? Was he doing it? And there are other things that were happening, stress. Factors. So we have to also not put, it's too easy to, over -sim to, to simplify things and say this trial belongs here and this trial belongs there. You know, we need to, we need to look at the whole picture. 
Absolutely, and just a few points, um, Pastor Jen. The first thing, um, in terms of surprises, and the Bible says, right, and although we are always surprised because we are human and we expect, okay, this is over, this is it, and something happens, so these things will happen as part of, you know, as Christian will be tested, so we shall expect those trials, we shall expect those surprises. That's right. So because we know that, that they are coming, we need to have a close relationship with God. Amen. We mm -hmm. have to be on our knees all the time. Mm -hmm. We have to have relationships with other um, sisters, other brothers, so that they can pray for us when we are going through those trials. So because we know they will be coming. So we should be always prepared for these hard be prepared for that next exactly. test. Exactly, we have right? to. So because we know, the Bible says it, so let's be ready. Let's be on our knees. Let's have that close relationship with God so that when the time comes, we have something that we can hold on. We have something that we can rely on. So Amen. that's very important. Amen. And, and to your question, because we asked a question, um, that's my second point, about, you know, the things that happen. Is it the consequence of our sins? Absolutely. So there are times when things happen because of what we do. That's right. Let's say I'm a speeder, right? <laughs> I speed and almost likely I will get a ticket, right? Uh -huh. So those things happen. So, be, so when we sin, for instance, God tell me, tells us to take off our bodies. And let's say I spend my time doing drugs and, and, and drinking and doing cocaine. I know there will be yourself. consequences That's and right. most likely I will, have, I will be very unhealthy. Well, so, so, yeah. so that's the first thing. So things happen because of our, of our sins, but also sometimes God allows things to happen to us. God allows the, I mean, he doesn't create those things, but he allowed the enemy to um, attack us so that, so, so that he can strengthen us. And he also sometimes designs himself, those trials, to right. mold us and make us stronger. So there are three ways to look at it. Those things that happen because of our own actions and consequences, those things that he allows to happen, that he let other people, the enemy, attack us. But sometimes he also designs those tests and travel so that we can be learn, molded. Learn, so exactly. that we can learn, exactly. Um, Sister Gertrude, I will allow you now to go ahead and lead us into Monday's lesson, The Crucibles of Satan. Yes, I think Cassandra just touched on it, I'm right? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, not a problem. <laughs> and this is a text on Monday lesson, if you, uh, if you study during the week, that we all know. The, Peter said in 1 Peter first, uh, 5, verse 8, be sober. Be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Recently, like three, three weeks ago, I was watching something on, on YouTube about li a lion that was attacking elephants. And what they say, if the elephant is sick, the elephant is weak, it's, an, it's very easy for him. And, but... When they are in group, it's more difficult. So what he tried to do, he tried to separate them. So when he separate them, he get only one. So he can just go on him. And Satan is using the same strategies on us, brothers and sisters. Same strategy. What he's trying to do, separate us from God. And he tried to see in our lives, what are the small cracks? What are the small openings? How... I can get in that person's life to separate that person from Jesus. And the day if he, if he gets to separate us from Jesus, we become weak and he can devour us. Some people, some Christians, they don't believe Satan really exists. And if you remember, Apostle Paul said that. We are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, the principalities in heavenly places. He's attacking us every day, and he has in his own strategies to attack us. At the same time, I'm going to read something uh, from Ellen J. White. He said, there are, some, there are Christians who take and speak all together too much about the power of Satan. They think of, of their adversary, they pray about him, they talk about him, and he looms up greater and greater in their imagination. It is true that Satan is a powerful being, but thank God we have a mighty savior who cast out the devil one from heaven. Satan is pleased when we magnify his power. Why not talking about Jesus? Mm, Why right. not magnify his power and his love? Mm -hmm. So 
He is here to attack us. But remember, remember that our Savior defeated Satan. Amen. He won at the cross. And if we got that relationship, like Cassandra just said, that close relationship with Jesus, we do. We can be, we can be victorious. Amen. And what are our strategies? Pray. Worship. Read our Bible. This is where we can get the strength daily to fight back. Satan will not leave us alone. He will That's not. Right. No, he, he will not leave us alone because what he wants, he wants to separate us from God. So we will not see God face one day. If we stay closer to him, closer to Jesus, we will want, we will win because our Savior has won at the cross. That was in summary, Monday lesson, crucible of Satan. Brothers and sisters, stay close, stay cling on, cling on to your Savior, cling on to Jesus, and do it on a daily basis. Amen. 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 I, I also want to say, when, when we know that he's attacking, we have the power to rebuke him. Amen. Yes. We have the power to say, get thee behind me. I, there have been several times, and I've told you about them in several sermons there and one specific time we were traveling and one kid was being taken to an emergency room and we are in the black of night in a new city trying to find a hospital and you feel satan knows when you are afraid and you feel um oppressed and as i felt this i lifted up my hand and i scared my husband really and i said Satan, I know what you are trying to do. You will not prevail because you have already lost. Father, break the chains, get us to the hospital quickly, and get my son in and out. Satan, you have no place here. Get out. Amen. And my husband looked at me like, what? where did that come from? And I said, I am telling Satan to get away from our family. And when you're able to speak like this, Satan trembles because he knows that the host of heaven is behind you. Yeah. One of the things I would like to mention as well, and this is something I've been doing, have a prayer partner. Have somebody, if you are going through something difficult, somebody that you can call to pray with you. Because just two days ago, I, I texted my husband, I said, baby, I'm under certain Satan attack right now. Because I felt that, See, he's bringing stuff in my memory that I was not supposed to bring in my memory. That's I right. texted him and said, please pray for me right now. I'm under certain attack. Because we, we, we know, when we know when the attacks come, but have somebody, have someone in your life, a prayer partner, that when you are going through something hard, when you feel the attack, you can call on that person to pray for you. I have someone in my life. Mm -hmm. I can call her at any time. That's One right. in the morning, I will send her a text, please pray for me. I'm going to something hard. And like, Cass like you said, Cassandra, we need other brothers and sisters to help us in the fight. Sometimes we cannot pray on our own. When things are rough, we cannot pray on our own. We need somebody else to help us in prayer. Amen, amen. 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 And can I add one thing, Pastor Jen? And, and I agree, we have to be aware of Satan. We know he's there. We know he's real. We know he's attacking every single day however there's something i think you said and that is very powerful because sitting he wants us to magnify to magnify his power that's what ah, he wants yes so yes. sometimes as christian we pay too more attention, too much attention, attention to, to his yeah. there that's but right. we need to spend more time giving glory to god because he is more powerful than satan Amen. we know he's there we know he's trying but god is more powerful and he will, he has overcome, and we will overcome. So we have to spend more time giving glory to God, to God. Yes. than wasting Hallelujah. time with Satan. That's because this right. is what he wants. He wants our time. He wants our glory. He wants our attention. We have to stay more focused on God than on Satan. That's right. Even the agony, agonizing that we do, right? Oh, I can't believe I'm in this trial. <laughs> Satan's like, yes. That's what he that wants. Agony. Exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he's saying. All right. Sister Cassandra, please take us through Tuesday, the crucibles of sin. Oh, Tuesday. That's a heavy lesson. Uh, yes, it was. Yes, Let's it try was. to get to it, shall we? All right. So it's a very heavy lesson. I know, Sister Dirt would beautifully explain the crucible of Satan because this they are trying to attack. But they are also the crucibles of sin, those that we are responsible for. <laughs> so they are those that we are responsible for. So we know that cause and effect, they always come together, right? Mm -hmm. If I push that table, 
I know for sure, that surely moves. that table will move. That's right. So when I do something, right, our actions, every action has consequences. Every action has its consequences. For instance, right, I said I move this table, and what happened? If I kill somebody, God forbid, most likely I will get arrested. So there are those prison. consequences. Yeah. But it's not, when he said cause and effect, it can also be something good. If I exercise every day, if I eat healthy, if I go to bed on time, God help me there, right? I'm likely to have a very healthy life. I'm, I'm likely to be in good health. So there are cause, you know, there are causes and, and, and effects. So what we do, there are always consequences. Well, it's the same thing for our spiritual lives. Mm -hmm. Same thing, because the Bible says in Romans 6, verse 23, that verse that we all know well, that the wages of sin is death. Is death. Is death. But what I like about this passage, it doesn't stop there. We have to look at the second part of, the, of this verse. Um, let me try to look it up quickly. I'm sorry, I should have had it handy. But we know that the gift of God is eternal life, right? Mm -hmm. The wages of sin is that, but the gift of God is eternal life. So when we sin, we die. But we, if we love Jesus, if we accept him, we will live eternally, as simple as it is. Right. We sin, eventually we die. But if we give our lives to Jesus, what will happen? We will have eternal life. Mm -hmm. So they are always, so our actions have consequences. That's right. So those consequences, oh yes, you wanted to say something, oh, go no, ahead. No, 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 go ahead. So those consequences, right, they are building, when we sin, there are those building consequences. As I said before, if we smoke, if we drink, if we do drugs and cocaine, well, there will be consequences. We most likely will be very unhealthy. If we are involved in sexual immorality, right, we get old, we get diseases, we get, we are unhappy. You, f you feel bad about yourself. So there are those consequences. If I kill somebody, I get arrested. If I sin, so we know for sure I will die. So those are the consequences. It's not like God sits there somewhere trying to say, okay, Cassandra, you do this, this will happen to you. But sometimes what we do, there are those consequences. That's right. And sometimes we sin, we don't, do, we don't see the, the consequences right away. They can be immediate or they can be delayed. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that sin that you've committed 20 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. And today, that's when you see, and then something happens to you and you think, huh, I see why, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes, so you have to be, so surely you will see the consequences. And those consequences are not only pain or diseases, things that we deal with today, but they have effect on your eternal life. What mm -hmm. will happen to you tomorrow? Mm -hmm. So but one of the things that you said, Castle and Shua, when mm -hmm. you sin, if you ask for forgiveness, Absolutely. God will forgive you. Absolutely. And that's the beauty of the gospel. Yes. That's the beauty of it, because if we do something wrong, or we ask for forgiveness, God will forgive us. And it's beautiful. Isn't it beautiful? It is beautiful. But let me pose a question to you. We can easily say that when we sin, we're forgiven, right? Does that wipe out the consequences that happen? Does it? Well, although, although we are forgiven, sometimes, mm -hmm. most of the time, we still have to deal with the consequences. Yeah, I agree. I agree. They, they don't go away, right? We deal with the consequences. But we, we are forgiven means that God will still give us eternal life. Yes. We may deal yes. with the earthly consequences, but one day my reward will be in heaven. Yes, that's right. Because I, I think of sometimes as, as Christians, we easily say, well, you know, you, you, you've sinned, then go ahead and ask forgiveness, and you're wiped away, and it's done, and it is. But then people see, well, what, what ha I've asked God for, for forgiveness, but then this has happened, and this has happened, and this has happened after all this. And we have to point out, but wasn't that the result of, of what you did, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Of what you did, and so others want want a well. Show me a biblical reference easily. David, <laughs> yeah. David and Bathsheba, he sinned, and Nathan had said, "This is what's going to happen to your household four times to your lambs, and it's going to be something that becomes generational." Right? And so even though David, a man after God's own heart, was truly repentant and forgiven by God, there was still the fault. There was still the fallout, the consequences of what, of what happened. This is what we deal with. The things that we do in our, in our humanness, mm -hmm. we deal with our consequences. Exactly. Exactly. 
can finish. Okay. And so let's continue with um, that lesson, principle of sin. So um, in Romans 1, verses 20 to 1, um, 21 to 32, that's very heavy. We are taken to the process of sin. So what we saw from these verses, let's try to read the first verses together. For although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God or gave thanks to him. Mm. So sin does not happen overnight. It starts with a disconnect with God. We don't have a relationship with him anymore. We think we are better than God. So we don't just sin out of nowhere. It starts here. That's right. It starts here, right? Mm -hmm. It starts here. And because your brain controls your action, then you sin. So we are disconnected from God. Um, let's keep going. Um, verse 21 still. But the thinking became futile. So this is what happened. So I, our heart became hard and mm. we become disconnected with God. We think we are better than God. We think we are wiser than him. And that's when we sin. And let me tell you, and again, I know we don't have much time. So I would like to go to all these verses, but the text, the passage goes to like, number of things Ten verses. Like sexual immorality <laughs> yes. a natural relationship all those things they are sin and and if we go down gossiping those are sins uh -huh. right mm -hmm. and i would like to read the whole thing but we won't have time to do that so we do all these things and they are consequences and i'm going to take you to the um last verse for the sake of time 32 um to 32 so it is that not only that when we sin, we are guilty, but also, although I don't do, I don't do those bad things, whatever I think is bad, but I approve those things. So if you sin, you do all those bad things, and I approve of what you do, I too sin according to this passage. Oh, That's say that heavy. again. If you approve, if exactly. I approve of what you're doing, then I'm sinning too. Exactly. Uh -huh. And let me tell you, I read this verse, I'm like, huh. And I was thinking. Because sometimes like, you know, I don't do this, but you're free to do what it will. We are free to do what we want to do. However, if I condone your behavior, if I approve of what to do, I am guilty according to this passage. And so, that is interesting. If you're gossiping and I'm hearing you and I'm nodding along and making and, and, and interjecting exactly. as well, I'm also part of the problem. Absolutely. Yes. You are. You are. You are. Yeah. So, so, so I think, however, as we said before, and as you stressed out also earlier, there is hope. Because that verse says that wages of sin is that are ever God's gift is eternal life. Amen. So no matter what you may have yeah. done, no matter what your past may have been, if you give your life to Jesus, you can be sure you will have eternal life. There's nothing that you have to do because it's all about grace. If you give your life to him, God will save you and you will have eternal life. Beautiful. Um, okay, there's a YouTube question. Hmm. YouTube question. What happens when you never smoke a day in your life, but you die of lung cancer, while someone who smokes lives a long life? We can't put our trials in categories. Thoughts, ladies? I know. Oh. That's, that's a heavy question. And you know what we know, I'm not a doctor, but in medicine, right, what we call their correlation between those things. Things, they're like what we call factors. So if you smoke, it's a factor. Most likely you will have lung cancer. It doesn't mean that you will have it for sure, but it's a factor to lung cancer. So mm -hmm. you can be smoking your whole life. I know some people who smoke their whole life and they never have lung cancer. And there are those who don't smoke because they are next to somebody who smokes all the time, they get lung cancer. So I think those things are, well, if you don't smoke, but you're next to, let's say you date somebody who smokes, right? Mm -hmm. All the time. So what do you think? Is that consequence of your own action? Because Con or you consequences always... of your environment? Exactly. It's like, who do you, who, who are you unequally yoked, right? So you don't smoke or you go to church, but you knowingly married somebody, you know, who's a smoker, who does not love God. So maybe that's also is a consequence of your own action, isn't it? What do you think? Oh, but don't forget, we live in a, in a sinful world. Exactly. You know. we pay, I mean, even we don't do something we all die exactly that's we right. all die. Are, because we're all sinners we are all sinners things will come to us that we don't deserve but but when we believe in christ we put our trust in him even when we don't understand certain things we still accept and knowing everything he's he's doing it's for our goods mm -hmm. and i believe there are things that we will never understand it's when we get to heaven that's we'll true get answers. that's true and, but and, also yeah. that person who smoked his whole life in or 
if it's a woman who never had cancer, maybe it's grace. It's God's grace. So as you said, the, those things will never understand, and God is merciful. So although you may have smoke, right, maybe you don't have lung cancer. Maybe you have other consequences. So it happens sometimes. And as we said at the beginning, there are things that God allows to happen to you. So although, again, I use that example of somebody who maybe you married somebody who's a smoker or doesn't love God, but maybe... Is your coworker smoking? Or maybe you're a student on campus, or maybe it's in, so, and people smoke, and you get that cancer, well. Look, those, are a lot of, those are a lot of maybes, though. Maybe you are, you know, next to someone who smoked all. I, th I think the bottom line would be that, like, like um, Sister Gertrude said, we can never, we're born into a sinful world. And we can do many things to, to, to try to not, to, to try to comply with health laws or, or, or we're not complying. You know, I have relatives who've, who've drunk all their lives and they're healthier than me in, in, in some weird way. But these things, we can never have full answers. I, I can never say, what, what, why did my dad die? He was a great Christian where, there, where, where, where this person um, didn't die and, and they didn't know Jesus. No, but I was going to say, Pastor Jane, was maybe God allows those things to happen. You're not responsible for them, but because it's a sinful word, world, God allows these things to happen to you. Never so smoke we, so, yourself. So that we can learn, maybe? Possibly. Again, we will never understand. Possibly. All right. Time is going. Um, Sister Gertrude, take us through Wednesday, the please. Last time I have to go fast, right? It, the Sorry. crucibles of purification, the verse said, Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will refine them and try them. For, sh for how shall I deal with the daughter of my people? So many times God can see something in us that he wants to mold us. He wants mm -hmm. us to become the woman or the man he wants us to be. And how he's going to do that mm -hmm. is by refining us. There are some things that can happen that you don't even, some of us, we, are, we, are, we have some sins in our lives. We don't, we have, we don't even realize that. Mm -hmm. We don't even notice that. But God needs to point this to us in a way so he can remove it from us so we, he can mold us to become a better person for his glory. Let me give you, I like example because <laughs> I have application in my life. My kids were in school at Sagros here. I remember my third child was not born yet. It was Stefan. I have three kids. The two older, one was probably six and four. For a reason I never understand, when at the corner, Flamengo, Sunrise and Oakland Park, there was always traffic in the morning. And I, I was so impatient, so impatient. I would have said, oh, the person does not know how to drive. <laughs> and the kids will say, mom, that's your grandma. That's your grandpa. Be patient. I felt ashamed for my little kids to teach me that. Very ashamed to teach me that. Now I have to ask God first to forgive me for not teaching my kids patience. And second, to teach me how to, when I see, when I, I'm waiting in light, what to do. And believe me or not, I've been praying now for people in front of me. When they are in the car, they cannot drive, they don't know how to drive a car, that's what I would say. <laughs> <laughs> I will pray for them. And this is what I learned to, be, to, I mean, to become patient. God has to reveal that to me through my, my little children mm. to teach me how to be patient because it's a sin. It's a sin not to behave properly. Mm -hmm. So, very quickly, I read something from Ellen White that said, Trials and obstacles are the Lord's chosen methods of discipline and his appointed condition of success. The fact that we are called upon to end our trials shows that the Lord Jesus sees in us something precious which he desires to develop. If he saw in us nothing whereby he might glorify his name, he would not spend time in refining us. He does not cast worthless stones into furnace. It is valuable all that he refines. Nice. We are, we are valuable to God. Yes. We are important to him. And he wants us to become the men and women he called us to be. And how he's going to do that? He's going to purify us. Yes. It might be difficult, but he's going to do it. 
Amen. Quickly, I wanted to point out, you're talking about the purification process. In Jeremiah 18, we see the story of the potter and the clay. And Jeremiah is watching the potter, and he watches as the potter is making a vessel. And then he feels that the vessel is marred, and, and he doesn't throw it away. He sees that that vessel or the clay for that vessel is still usable. And so he forms it into something new. And when we think about the potter, I was researching the, the, make, the pottery making, how, how they do it. Um, back then, they, they would feel and they would take that clay after making it into clay, after putting it, taking all the stones and putting the water in, they would take it, they would beat the clay. They would beat it continuously until all the air bubbles were out. Because if there was a single air bubble in when it gets put into the kiln, then the whole thing is marred. So they would beat it. And then, not only that, now the potter would put the clay on the stone, and as the the stones would spin, and he would have it in his hand. He would feel, oh, that there is something wrong here. There's, a, there's a, an extra air bubble. There's something here that is wrong. He would feel that, that, that stone, the thing that's not going to make you usable. So instead of, instead of throwing it down, he's going to beat it out again. He's going to refine again until the clay is ready to be used. That was the refining process. And so God, when, we, when, when we're in these tests and we're wondering how come this, these same tests keep on coming at us? Why are we always being crucified in these trials? God is still molding you. He's still refining you. And how you know in pottery when you're ready, how you know that you are ready is the pottery sings when touched. Sister Cassandra, um, Thursday, the crucibles of maturity. And that was a good segue, Pastor Jan, to the crucible of maturity because remember what he said, God, he does those things so that we can be refined, but also that we can be mature. We can become mature Christian. Mm -hmm. So I said before, there are those tests that happen to us because God allows them to happen or that we're responsible for, but sometimes God designs those, those tests so that we can become mature Christian. It's a process. So I was using examples. If you, if like, you like, um, fla um, you have flowers, you have beautiful flowers, right? But guess what? Sometimes you have to cut the dry leaves. You yeah. have to clean your, all the damaged part, all the, um, oh, the part that you don't desire, the dry part, the damaged part. Those have to be removed from your flower. And that's what God does to you as well. Mm -hmm. So parts of us are damaged. Those have to be removed, cut out so that we can become mature Christian. So it's a process. So the crucible of, of, of maturity are those things that God's design, that he does to you so that we can become mature Christian. It can be a witness to somebody else. Mm -hmm. That's what yeah. God wants to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Amen. that you can become a witness to somebody else. So you have to go through those hard process. And those things, and Paul, if you know, in, you know, um, um, in the Bible, he was linked with all those things and he was grateful for them. Those thorns he taught were given to him by God himself, and he was grateful for them. So sometimes, think, I would like to go and reflect of all your trials and ask yourself, what was the purpose of that trial? Did God design this trial so that I can be the person I am today? Did God design this trial so I can be very strong today, so I can be a better Christian? Because sometimes we, and that happens to me, when God answers your prayers all the time, all the time, you become comfortable. You think, ah, it's easy. God will do it. Mm -hmm. And that's when you stop praying sometimes. You're so comfortable in your relationship with God sometimes. You become disconnected because you know, huh, God will provide. So sometimes it has to test you so that you can have that wake-up call that you know to stay connected with him. Because when you're too comfortable, sometimes you think he's doing great. You have no issues. So you think to forget God and put in the back burner, right? Do we do that that's sometimes? Right. You think to right. do that. So sometimes... Yeah those wicked calls and those tests and the trials that we can stay connected with him because you know when those trials come most of the time you have to be on your knees to overcome them yeah That's and one other right. thing i want to add quickly yes. mm -hmm. you become dependable exactly and this is for me i depend on god in every single thing because all the trials i went through i cannot mention them everything i went through they helped me to become the person i am today yes. and i depend on god exactly. in every single thing of my life i depend on him Yes. And, 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 and you know what, 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 and when you become closer to God, it's when you realize all I have is him. Because yes. there are those tests sometimes that you get through, get, and, 
and, and when you test it and you say, you know what, I know God did it to me, and set it, he's a liar. He will tell you, well, did God do it for you, or is it because you does this, it happen? So when God takes everything away, you cannot help yourself whatsoever. No one can help you know to rely on him only. Mm -hmm. And he designed those tests so that you can become mature and you will have a relationship with him. And you know, you will become a true Christian and your reward for those tests and trials will be in heaven. Amen. Beautiful. I'd like to end with a verse in 2 Corinthians 12, verses 9 through 10. And it says... And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon thee. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecution, in distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This is saying that in everything that comes to you, your trials, the journey that you are just having trouble walking, rejoice. Rejoice because you will see, because you've already have seen how God has brought you through. But in this new test, in this new infirmity, in this new sickness, rejoice because you, one, are connected to a God who loves you. You are connected to a God whom you know has already done great things. And if, he, if he's already done great things in the past, he's going to pull you through now. And when you can rejoice and say, God, I give you everything, even in this trial, you don't know who's looking at you, who is witnessing you, who is saying, wow, that sister, that brother is going through this time, but God is bringing, bringing them through. And because they're boasting and testifying about God's goodness, God can do this for me too. These trials become a witnessing tool for others to come closer to Christ. Thank you for joining us for our Sabbath school. Let us pray, Father God. We thank you, Lord. Lord, we wish we had more time, Lord, to, to share about our experiences, Father, and, and, and to delve deep and, and have those voila moments. But God, thank you for this time, Lord. And Lord, I ask that you give us that desire to know you more, that instead of just going through a Sabbath school lesson, Lord, that we will really, Father, want to know you, will open the word, Father, and get to know you for ourselves and look at every single experience and trial that comes through every day and first say, Lord, how are you teaching me? And may you still be praised through all of this. Father, thank you for your goodness, your continued goodness to us. In your name, amen.
Good morning, good morning, and happy Sabbath. Good morning. Please stand with us. Let's pray and invite the presence of the Lord to be with us this morning. Oh, Lord, dear Heavenly Father, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much for just allowing us to be here again on this Sabbath day, God. Thank you for just allowing us the privilege to be here in your house. I pray right now that you let us leave all the cares of the world behind for just a minute, God. I pray that you allow us to simply put it at the altar so that we can simply focus on worshiping you this morning, God. I pray that you energize us with your Holy Spirit, God. And I pray that we leave here simply changed. In your name we so humbly pray, amen. Amen. We're going to sing a song that's relatively new. It says, you have made me glad. Oh, no, no, no. Don't sit down. This is a song that you got to move to. You have made me glad. I'll give thanks to you, Lord, and sing praise to your name.
the glory great things he has done and if he's done great things in your life we're going to sing out let's sing to god be the glory to god be the glory great things he has done done great things amen 
We're going to sing another song titled, When I Think About the Lord. I don't know about you, but when I think about the Lord, I think of him as being my soul protector, my deliverer, my healer. He is my everything, my everything. And so I just want to give him praise this morning, and I invite you to just join me as we sing this song. And I'm going to ask my daughter, Serena, <laughs> to just start the song off. Amen. And it said that um, God is a, a, a hypothetical supreme being. Well, I don't know about you, but I don't serve a God who is hypothetical. I serve a God who is real. Because when I was down, he picked me up. And I'm not just saying that. I've had some low periods in my life. But God was there for me. My mother wasn't there for me. My father wasn't there for me. But God, he was there for me. Do I have a witness out there? He turned me around. He placed my feet on steady ground. And I just want to give him the honor and glory. Join me in singing hallelujah. Let's give him the praise. Hallelujah is the highest praise because he deserves the highest praise. The highest praise. Come on and sing with me. Hallelujah. Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. He's worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. Happy Sabbath, somebody. We thank God that we can be assembled together to worship a God who is worthy of our worship. We affirm and declare that all the other gods of the nations are idols, but our God made the heavens and the earth. And so as we have congregated together, we do so not as an act of futility. We do so as an act of faith, knowing that we serve an awesome God, a God who is worthy to be praised. For those in house, welcome those who are our guests. First timers, we're glad that you came and we want you to keep coming. For those who are joining us online, welcome. You know the drill. Go ahead and like the page. Go ahead, subscribe to the page. Go ahead and share the link with someone so they too can enjoy the blessings of God. Just want to remind you, as we've been saying for quite some time now, that church is open. Amen? Church is open. There is nothing like in-person service. I know you don't mind closing up with your, uh, your sanka and your crumpets at home, but there's nothing like being in the house of God. Amen? Uh, worshiping and sharing in the fellowship of the believers. So church is open. Yes, when you come, please be mindful of your neighbor. And so we ask you to don, to wear a mask. And when you see the sign, it means that the mask, uh, someone's mask is off in the house. Uh, please help us as we keep to keep, uh, we help to keep each other safe. Uh, just a few notices, our care for homeless. They'll be going out today at 2 p.m. You are invited to join them as we seek to be the hands and feet uh, the God in our community. The next outreach prep will be on Friday, uh, the 7th, uh, the 15th rather, of July. This time I ask you just to turn your attention to the screen, to the screen for a brief video, and then we'll have just a, a brief introduction. Did you know that nearly 116 million adults in the United States have hypertension? There are 96 million American adults who have prediabetes. That's one in three adults. Of those 96 million, more than eight out of 10 do not even know they have it. If these individuals with prediabetes don't make lifestyle changes, many of them could develop type 2 diabetes within five years. More than two-thirds of adults in the United States are overweight and obese. In 2020, nearly one in five U.S. adults were struggling with a mental illness. That's 52.9 million people. Maybe you're one of these people, or maybe you know someone struggling with a lifestyle disease. The good news is you can even prevent or sometimes reverse these and other conditions through a transformation in lifestyle. On July 31st, starting at 10 a.m., the Plantation Seventh-day Adventist Church presents Living Your Best Life Community Health Fair. The event will focus on New Start. New Start is a physician-monitored, scientifically researched lifestyle change program based on eight fundamental principles proven to help you achieve optimum wellness. Nutrition, exercise, water, sunlight, temperance, air, rest, and trust. Free health screenings will be provided to determine if you are at risk of certain lifestyle diseases. You will learn practical ways to lower body fat. Receive valuable information on the importance of things like water, exercise, rest, and stress management. Enjoy delicious plant-based food from local food trucks and food vendors. There will be cooking demonstrations by a renowned executive chef. But the fun doesn't stop there. There will be music, live entertainment, and a kids' fun zone featuring bounce houses, climbing walls, and activities for all ages. 
Don't miss this event. July 31st, starting at 10 a.m. Come and join us for a day of food, fun, health, and wellness at Plantation Central Park. Hey man, I'm going to ask Elder Nick to join me here. I uh, just have uh, two questions for you. Uh, the first one is, Elder Nick, why are you so excited about this? Uh, every time I talk with you, you're always as excited as if you were a child on Christmas Day. Uh, <laughs> listen, guys, um, I don't know what it is about this, about getting outside the walls that excites me so much. But my experience sometimes as a church, we spend too much time in here with each other right. and not enough time out there sharing the gospel. And at Seventh-day Adventist, we have an amazing message, yeah? yes, yes. And, and the health message is the right arm of the gospel. And what we're going to be doing on July 31st right. is going out and sharing that message with our community. And can I tell you what's even more exciting, Pastor? As we've started just a tiny little bit of promoting this, we're now starting to get calls from other agencies, non-Christian, non-Adventist, saying, hey, we're seeing what you're doing. How do we get involved? Amen. So listen, maybe it's not even just for us to reach the community, but we're going to be rubbing shoulders and talking with these other people about our message yes, that yes. Jesus has given us. So that's why I'm so excited, but we still need help. Yeah, last week when I, when I asked uh, you guys, I was told that you have uh, most of the vendors on, on, on and you have... I think to date about 60 plus persons. Could you say something about that, where we are in terms of volunteers and in terms of, of, of vendors and in terms of logistics? Okay. So as of now, we have about 52, 53 volunteers. A few people just signed up. What we really need is closer to 100, right? And we're looking for, in particular, at least 30 more people who are healthcare professionals. Now, most of the exhibits that we're going to have, you don't have to be a healthcare professional to do. But there are a few where we're going to be taking blood and a few things like that. We really, really would love healthcare professionals to be there. And at some of the other booths, if someone in the community has a question, it would be great if we had a healthcare professional to them to speak to. So we're going to ask you guys in the lobby, sign up. Yes. This QR code that you see here, if you scan that, it will take you into a form that you can go in and select, hey, I'm a healthcare professional. I just want to volunteer. I can do any of these things. We really, 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 really need you guys to be there. Now, understand there'll be a training this, uh, this afternoon. Could you say something about that? Sure, sure. So it wouldn't be fair for us to ask you guys to go out and interact with the community and not give you the tools required, right? Because then the community wouldn't have a good experience, yes. and you wouldn't have a good experience. Yes. So we're doing a training at 3.30 this evening, uh, which is going to introduce New Start. How many of you guys know what New Start is? I've gone through a New Start program. Okay, so I've got one, two, I had three hands in here, four. So, the, okay, I've got six now. The reality is that we're about to go give a message to the community that sounds like that we don't know ourselves. Right, right, right. So we need to be here to learn because this is for us as well, yes. taking care of ourselves. So we will do the training today at 3.30, and then again on the 23rd at 3.30, we'll do lunch and we'll do training in the gyms. We really, really need you guys to be there. Amen. And Amen. This sounds like all hands on deck. This sounds like this will be our opportunity as a church to connect with community, to be the hands and feet of Jesus, to really live the gospel to connect people to what Jesus has been doing in our lives. And so please, uh, sign up, be involved. The training will be uh, this evening at 3.30. Please be part of it. And I know God is going to, I believe God is going to move uh, in, in, on this and just connect someone to him. Uh, last word. Yeah, I've got one more thing. If you see this right here. So for some of you who may not be able to attend or get involved the way you would like, or even if you are able to attend, one of the things we're doing is we're giving away backpacks and school supplies to the community. Amen. Right now what we have, we have 100 backpacks, but they're empty. All right. What we want to do is for as many kids as possible, if you want to bring backpacks as well, fantastic. We want to give them a backpack filled with school supplies. Amen. And then we want to write a note in there. Amen. We want to write a note of encouragement, letting them know they're loved by us. We're praying for them and that they're going to have an awesome year. Amen. So please take a look at that list. Um, there's going to be a box in the lobby, uh, but it's not there right now, but there's going to be a box in the lobby. And also throughout the week, outside of the school, if you want to drive by and drop off school supplies, there will be a box there as well. Amen. Thank you so much. I mean, thank you so much, Elder Nick. Again, all hands on deck. And folks, I believe that this is really an awesome opportunity for us as a church uh, to connect with community. Before I take my seat, I'd like to uh, in, uh, welcome, especially welcome, 
uh, Pastor and Sister Phillips. Where are you sitting? Uh, they're from uh, St. Thomas. Where are you, Pastor Phillips and Sister Phillips? Just stand and wave to the folks. Uh, just want to welcome you as you worship with us today. Pray that as you do so, you and the family, you, you'll be blessed. Understand we have some folks from St. Croix uh, here with us. I was talking with a few of them. Uh, the only problem I have is that the guy told me they brought no fry fish with them uh, on this trip. And I, and I say, how can you? Anyway, we, you're forgiven, Brother Thomas. But welcome, we hope that as you worship with us, you will be blessed. God bless you. Good morning, boys and girls. We have more, way more boys and girls than that. Where are you? Come over, come, come. All the boys, all the girls, please come closer because it's your favorite part of the service. It is children's story time. Wonderful, I love it. And I miss you during COVID. We were here, up here alone, lonely doing the children's stories. So today it's a beautiful day. And we are glad that you are here in the house of the Lord. So before we get started, I want one of you to pray for me. Who wants to pray today? Okay, that beautiful girl with the beautiful dress wants to pray. Okay, let us pray. Jesus, thank you for your witness and always protecting us. And always let us have some things that is healthy that is Amen. Amen. So, boys and girls, I have something to show you today. I have something under this I would like to show you. Are you ready to see it? Oh, you were here this morning. You might know what it is. So, let's see. Ta da! Yes, what are these? They are mangoes. I love mangoes too. They are usually, most of the time, they can be very good. They are very healthy. They are packed with vitamins. Vitamin C, vitamin A. They have fiber. They have lots of nutrients. They are very, very good for you. They are very healthy. And they taste good most of the time. They can be sweet. But they can be sour too sometimes, right? So some mangoes are better than others, right? So let me ask you a question. I know you guys are very smart. So how do I know if my mangoes are good? How do I know? Yes. That's very smart. If they are red or orange, maybe you might know that they might be good. What else? Somebody say something. Was it you? Yes, you have to try to see. To know if my mango is good, I have to try it. I have to eat it. I have to taste it. And so let me try my mango to see if it's good. Hopefully it's good. So let me see. Let me see. Let's pick the biggest one. I love food, obviously. So let me pick the biggest one. That's my mango. Let's see how it tastes. <clears throat> Woo! That is heaven on earth. It is good. It is sweet. It is juicy. It is tasty. So you know why I know my mango is good? Oops. It's okay. Because I tried it. Because I ate it. Because I tasted it. Well, guess what? It is the same thing for Jesus. The Bible says 
in Psalm 34, verse 8, which is our memory verse for today that we're going to remember, taste, oops, I'm eating. That's why you have to eat first and swallow before you talk. That's why your mom and daddy tells you, they tell you at home, right? Okay. So taste and see that the Lord is good. So, okay, let's say it together. Taste and see that the Lord is good. One more time so that heaven can hear. Taste and see that the Lord is good. So I have one more question for you guys. How do you taste and see Jesus? How do you do that? How? Hmm, how do you do that? Yes? You love Jesus. Amen. You love him. What else? Anything else? Yes. You, you see him from your mind. You see him from your mind. I love that too. You guys are so smart. You pray to him. You, oh, no, that's a good one too. You pray to him. Exactly. Oh, one last answer. Well, two last answers. Two last answers. Your heart. You, you can see him from your heart? Yes, from your heart. I like that. One last answer. Good answers. Yes. You bless him. You bless him. I like that too. So you guys are very smart. So to test and see Jesus, you have to have, you have to try him. You have to have a relationship with him. You have to spend time with him. You have to pray to him so you can see if he really answers your prayers, right? So let me tell you this story. Once upon a time, there's that woman who was very sick. She was sick for years. She had an issue of blood for 12 years. And she has spent all of her money trying to see all the doctors in town. And she was still sick. But one day, she heard of a man named Jesus. What, what did she do? She's like, I have to see and try that man myself. I need to see him. I need to test him so I'll know if he's really, really, really good. So she got up. And back then, Jesus was very popular because he was healing everybody. He was making all these miracles, right? So there was always a huge crowd. Not always. Most of the time in the Bible, right? A huge crowd around Jesus. So that woman with the issue of blood, she got up. She got out of bed. She got dressed as beautifully as you guys today, and she walked, and she walked all the way to the crowd because she wanted to meet Jesus to try him, to test him, to experience him, to test him. She needed to know if he was really, really good. And guess what she did? Oh, Jesus is simple. You don't have to do much to try Jesus. She walked as far as she could. And she got through the crowd to Jesus. There were so many people around Jesus, it was hard to get to him. You know what she did? She just, she touched Jesus. And as soon as she touched Jesus, guess what happened? She was healed. And she felt it. The blood stopped. She was healed. You know why? Because she tried Jesus. She tasted him. She experienced him. Okay? So, boys and girls, I want you to taste God for yourself. I know you come to church every day, pastor speaks and pastor preaches and he talks and he talks and say, oh God is good, oh God is good. Your mom and dad tell you all the time, Jesus is good. But you know what you have to do? You have to experience Jesus for yourself. So when you have a problem, what do you do? You pray to him, you talk to him, you'll have a relationship with him. And I guarantee you that you'll see, just like me, that he's very good. Because the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. One more time. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Good job, guys. Good job. I want one more prayer. One prayer. Who wants to pray for me? You prayed, you prayed before, right? So let's speak to somebody else. But you did such a good job this morning. Who wants to pray now? Did you say, okay? Beautiful girl.
Amen. Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. You may be seated. Last Sabbath was a very high Sabbath here at your plantation, Seventh-day Adventist Church. And it was the day when, we, when Pastor Jennifer Hernandez was commissioned to make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And guess what she did, as you probably know if you were here, she baptized two of her very own sons. They said yes to Jesus. They were baptized. All their sins were washed away. They received the Spirit of God to be with them forever. Today we give them gifts. Today we give them their certificates. Today we invite the elders to lay hands on them, either physically or virtually. And we invite the pastors to say a very special prayer of dedication that God never forgets over their lives going forward. Um, Pastor, I'm, I'm here with Barbara Samuels, who leads along with Celia Casey, the Children's Baptismal Study. And she will just um, speak to that in a minute, and then we'll invite Paul and Joshua up. Go ahead. We're inviting the elders to just come, let us pray, and the pastors over. And we're also encouraging anyone whose child has expressed an interest in wanting to be baptized. We have a children's baptismal class that, praise God, that continued throughout COVID, and God continued to bless and to bring souls in. And you'll be surprised to know how these children have learned and grow. We've seen so many children who are active in our church who have went through this children baptismal class and is continuing to do marvelous work. So if your child has expressed a desire, don't, don't worry and think they don't know. God has a way of reaching them at whatever age because he's the one who makes the difference. Thank you. Our baptismal studies at 3.50 this afternoon, as, and every Sabbath afternoon we have Mr. Sabbath. And um, next scheduled baptism is on Sabbath, August 20. But if you have a desire to be baptized at a different time, um, we will be glad to work to see how we can make that happen. Having said that, I want to ask the um, elders around and the pastor to say a prayer of dedication on, over the lives. Father, we, we join in with heaven as we rejoice over Paul and Joshua who have decided that the best friend to have is Jesus Amen. and the best time to have him is now. We thank you, Lord, that they have decided to give their hearts to you at this age. And we know, based on our own experience, that this will help them navigate life, will help them to make good decisions. We pray that you will keep them. And may this be a seminal moment in their lives, that in years to come, as they reflect on this moment, they'll do so with joy in their hearts. As a church family, we affirm them and we affirm our desire to do all that we can to so disciple them that they will grow up to be spiritual giants in the house of God. 
We pray that their example would seek to encourage some other boy, some other girl, the decision. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I'm going to ask uh, the elders and pastors, just stay uh, where you are. I got news just last week, news that uh, almost broke my heart. I got news that uh, Desir, Daniel Desir, Elder Des Daniel Desir, and their family, that this Sabbath will be their last Sabbath. Say, oh, <laughs> yes. And uh, I want to invite uh, uh, Daniel, where are you, uh, to join us here. As a church, we want to express how your presence and the family, and, and, and your family's presence, has been, has been, oh, <laughs> how, how, how his presence has been such a blessing to our family here at Plantation. I, I, I feel as if, Mo, we are, we are lending him to wherever he's going. In his, we're, we're lending them out uh, temporarily. Uh, uh, we're giving them a return ticket uh, <laughs> to where they're going. We have a special presentation. Go ahead, LMO. Well, it was, um, it was indeed a sad day, as the, the Desir family announced just uh, two weeks ago, two weeks ago that they were leaving us, and um, we are saddened. We are very sad to see you guys go. Um, Fabian, I know you're watching. I'm, I'm sad that you're not here. We know why you're not here. We'll, we'll talk with you about that later. But, um, you know, the Desir family, you guys have been at Plantation for 20 years, growing, serving, and leading. Um, the girls have grown up in Pathfinders, and the parents have, have been leading in, in church ministry and in Pathfinders and so many other things. I think several ministry leaders can, um, can count um, how you have served with them on the prayer line and, and so many others. We're just going to miss you guys. Um, there are just no words, enough words to say how much we've appreciated the time that God allowed you here at Plantation. Um, but we know that he's going to continue to do great things with you, for you, through you. Um, as you were mentioning earlier, you're going to be like Abraham. You're going to a foreign land. Um, but uh, God, will, God will use you. And we have a couple of gifts here on behalf of um, the church. We want to present you. Uh, the flowers are for Miss Fabian. I feel like we shouldn't even give it because she didn't come to receive her, receive her, her gift. So this basket here is for your new home. Um, and this envelope here and the contents are from your fellow elders. Um, but for the entire family... Um, I, that's, that's all I'm going to say. I know that um, Pastor Jen would like to say something, and if anyone else wants to jump in. I just, yeah, okay. Got it. Every single time I have asked Elder Daniel or Sister Fabienne or Lizzie or Jemima to do something, anything, sing, do a prayer, lead out in Sabbath school. You know the response that I've always had? Yes, pastor, anything to serve. Amen. Amen. And not only that, it's not just obligatory. Look at the smiles Amen. that yes, he, they always yes. come and yes. give in service. The whole family and their example has trickled down to their daughters. Amen. 
And it is just so wonderful to see young people grow up not only in love with Jesus, but in love to serve him. And so it broke my heart when I heard the news. And I kind of want to chain your family to the stage. But God calls us to be lights to other parts. Amen. And hey, you know what? We've trained you. Amen. I'm just joking. <laughs> Go and be a blessing Amen. to where God has called you to be. And I wanted to leave you with number six. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Make the, may the Lord lift up his countenance towards you and give you peace. Thank you for all that you have been to Plantation. You know, we're your family. So you can come back anytime. You don't have to leave. But we love you. We love you. Amen. that on sports day um elder danny came in before me <laughs> he's not a simple guy you see him there <laughs> but his laughter um his presence is a blessing um i tell you uh, in, in youth ministry um this young woman here she is a rock here in plantations youth ministry and and uh we're gonna miss you we're going to miss Jamima, your ministry. You, you'll, oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. She'll be here for a year. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, but we value you and you, and, and you, you know, it's hard for um, a part of the body to, to be dismembered or, or moved, uh, taken away, and the body remains the same. And so plantation will not be the same without you but by God's grace together where you are and and if we here we will continue to do God's work and so we, we are we're we are praying for you as you make this transition and God's peace to you and the entire family amen 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 I'm gonna ask uh, Pastor Mike to join us here Pastor Mike could you just join us a special prayer uh, for Elder Desir and where are you Steve Steve could you just block the doors could you just block the doors so that Daniel doesn't leave all right. All right. But uh, I want to ask you, Pastor, just to say a special prayer on, 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 their, on, on their behalf as they go. He is so cute. He's always smiling. All right. Hallelujah. Yeshua Mashiach Adonai Sar Shalom. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray for this family, that wherever they go, they bring the same thing that they had here for all these years. Saturate them in the blood of Yeshua from the top of their heads to the bottom of their feet. And we bind Satan in the name of Yeshua, Hashem Yeshua Mashiach, to, from harming them in any way, shape, or form. Surround them with mighty warrior angels selling in strength with fiery swords above them below them front back up them right and we send them off with our love here we give you honor praise and glory yeshua's name amen 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 thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. gonna miss can you hear me can you hear me in that one
Happy Sabbath. Good afternoon, everyone. We're surely going to miss you, Elder Desir. But you know, everything feels in the same place. As we have the health fair coming up, I'm just going to share with you the benefits of giving. That anyone knows when you give, it lowers your blood pressure, it increases your self esteem, it makes you live longer, and it gives you greater satisfaction of happiness. Anyone know that? Don't you feel sometime after you come from volunteering for a project, on your way back home, you feel so good. And you exercise that brain rewards in your brain that um, we give serotonin and is, is uh, by scientists, is backed up by scientists. And I'm gonna be sharing that with you. First of all, like I said, it lower blood pressure, increase self-esteem, less depression, lower stress level, longer life, and greater happiness and satisfaction. And also, he had said, giving can help you live longer. But this is what happened when you're feeling happier. He said, this is the reason why you feel excitement when you are about to give because to someone else and when you feel close to them doing why you feel happy the, there is evidence that doing giving behaviors human secret feel good chemicals out of your brains such as serotonin a mood medi a mood mediating chemical dopamine a feel good chemical and oxycotin oxycosin a compassion and bonding chemical. Unbelievable. God has everything in control. When you give, that's what the Bible said, God loves a cheerful giver. Because when you give with all your heart, that makes you happy. It makes you happy. Because, you know, happiness is not easy to find. Only God gives you happiness. And when you give, you have happiness. Amazing. When I see God, you know, invention, God uh, plans for us from the beginning, what are to fight your happiness. And please, we have the health fair coming up. Try to involve. And there are a study who proven also that people who are 55 and older who volunteer, they live five years longer than they were supposed to live. So please, no age limit for you to volunteer. A special program is coming up, the health program. Please get involved. And you'll be the really benefit from that program so learn to give because you'll be blessed and you'll be happy and you'll be among the among those who are blessed by the lord so find the opportunity in your community to serve and it will do good to you and it will do it will glorify god thank you let's pray father in heaven you're such amazing god you are in every detail of our lives from the day we were born until now. Father, give us a heart of giving. And in that way, when we give, Father, we are blessed and we are happy. And our whole, we are mental and physically are blessed. So, Father, bless the offering. Bless, bless those who give. Bless those who don't have anything. Because you are the one who owns everything in this world. We ask you all of this, Father. Thank you for the event we're about to come in July 31st. May you be the leader. May you know who has to be there. Bless it because it's all for your glory. We ask of you, Father, not because of anything I've done or anything we have done, but through the precious, precious blood of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Good morning. Happy Sabbath, everyone. I'd like to ask you all to stand as we continue our song service.
Lord, thank you for being here. Thank you for just being all we need. Lord, thank you for being our Savior. This next song just simply says, you're my future, you're my hope, you're all I need.
Jesus and all I want to sing is his just sing his name all my heart belongs to Jesus and by his grace and mercy I am saved hallelujah it's prayer time y'all y'all ready to go to God in prayer amen 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 uh, before we pray I just want to uh, share with you what God placed on my heart this morning um, Jeremiah, how many of you know who Jeremiah is? Jeremiah, called to be a prophet of God. Um, his name actually means God will uplift. And uh, he was also known as the weeping prophet as he wept over Jerusalem. Um, in Jeremiah 1.5 it says, and this is God speaking to Jeremiah, before I formed you, in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Now, you and I may not have been called to be modern day prophets or prophetesses, but we are called nevertheless. You and I, we are chosen. First Peter 2 9 says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. The promises of God in the book of Jeremiah are promises given to you and to me. In Jeremiah 29, uh, verse 11 to 13, it reads, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and you will find me when you search for me with all of your heart. And then in Jeremiah 33, verse 3, it reads, It reads, Call to me, and I will answer you, and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Isn't that beautiful? Is that reassuring? Finally, in Jeremiah 32 verse 27 says behold I am the Lord God of all flesh is anything too hard for me is anything too hard for your God is anything too hard for your God then if you believe that nothing is too hard for your God I invite you to kneel with me as we go to him in prayer Oh God, you've been our dwelling place through all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, wherever the world was formed, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You sit on the throne. You are the sovereign ruler of the universe you are our creator god and it is an honor and a privilege to come boldly before the throne of grace where we've been told that we can obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need 
Lord, we need you. We need you like the flower needs the rain, God. We need you. I don't know where we'd be without you, God. We need you. And so it is an, a privilege for me, Lord, to, to kneel here on behalf of your waiting congregation to intercede on their behalf. And Father, as I pray, Lord God, if there's anything in me that is unlike you, God, please remove it. Take it away so that my prayers may be heard. Lord, you are good. You are so good. You're better than good. God, you're great. And your greatness is seen through all creation. You're an awesome God. And we bow before your majesty to give you praise because praise, praise is what you deserve. You deserve all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor for all that you've done for us, Lord. Father, we are not worthy. We are not worthy, but we are so grateful for the blood of Jesus, your only begotten son who you sent to die a death that we deserve. You sent him to die in our place, God, and we thank you. We thank you that because of that death on Calvary, we have right to the tree of life. Because of his death, we are now, Lord, able to come boldly before you, Father, forgive us for our sins. Cleanse us, O oh God, of all unrighteousness. Purify us, God, and fill us, Lord, with your Holy Spirit so that we might walk the walk that we're supposed to walk, so that we can talk to talk that we're supposed to talk, so that we, Lord, might do the things that we're supposed to do, like telling others about your soon return, telling others of how good you are, telling others of how real you are and how you've manifested yourself in our lives, in our day-to-day -day lives, the things that you've brought us through and the things that you've saved us from, the things that you provided and the protection that you've given us. God, you're so good. And we've taken you for granted. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us. So this morning, Father, I pray for your church at large. Father, you know that we're embarking upon a health fair. And the whole idea, Lord, the whole premise, as you already know, is, is so that we can share with our community what abundant living is all about. But not only that, we want to point them to you. And so, Father, we ask your blessing upon this endeavor. It's not about us, Lord. It's all about you. So we ask God for your direction and for your wisdom as we continue to plan. And we pray, Father, I pray for this congregation and those who are listening. Lord, we continue to need volunteers, Lord. Help this church, Lord, to understand the importance. All hands are needed so that we can do the work that you've called us to do. So that when you come, you'll be pleased with us. So that not one soul that is in need of saving will be lost. So God, help us, I pray in Jesus' name. And Father, I pray for your people, your waiting congregation, Father. Many of us are going through trials and tribulations as we're studying in the, in the Sabbath school lesson, Lord. Many of us are in that crucible. We're struggling. We're hurting. We're depressed. We feel like we can't go on. Some are hopeless. Oh God, we know that you are able to rescue these individuals. So God, I speak over them right now and ask God that your Holy Spirit would attend to them in the name of Jesus and that you'd lift them, Lord, from the pit and that you set their feet on a solid rock to stand. That rock is Jesus. Help them, Lord, to know that you you don't desire for them to be in the situation that they're in but we know that you work all things for our good we know that what satan means for evil you will work it out for our good and so father as we're in the fire we know that you're there with us and we thank you and we know that when we have come through we will come through as pure gold so we thank you for what you're doing 
in our lives, Father. Help us to hold on, to trust you, to never give up. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for your unconditional love, God. Thank you for saving us, oh God. Father, I pray favor over this congregation and those who are listening. Father, we know that life and death is in the power of the tongue. And so I speak blessing over this congregation. I speak blessings over this congregation, Father, that we may be the head and not the tail. We may be above and not beneath. We may be lenders and not borrowers, oh God. Father, I pray favor in our going out and our coming in. Bless us, Father. Yes, I pray in Jesus' name. I pray for those, Lord, who are sick and in need of healing. God, you are the almighty healer. May they feel a touch from you today. Lord, raise them from a, their bed of affliction in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for those whose marriages are dead. I speak life to dead things this morning. I speak life to dead marriages and dead relationships in the name of Jesus. I speak life over her finances. I speak life over these people, Father. Give us life. And may we be the light shining in a dark world, pointing people to you. Oh God, today I pray for the one who will break forth the bread of life, Pastor McCoy. Lord, you've used them before. Do it again, Lord. Do it again, Lord. Touch his lips, oh God. Touch his lips and speak life to your people today is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. church say amen 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 praise the lord welcome everybody to the house of the lord welcome to worship welcome 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 to plantation welcome to those who are joining us online via our streaming on youtube and also on facebook we're happy that you have joined with the plantation church for worship today and i know we have some guests with us from St. Croix, the, the U.S. Virgin Islands, um, Pastor Tong and wife and a, a few more people. And we know we have guests from other uh, places in the congregation. And so we welcome you here to the family of God here at the Plantation Seventh-day Adventist Church. And again, to those who are online, thank you for being here with us. I want to give God thanks for this church and uh, how I was supported, my family and I, in our time of grieving uh, when I lost my, my sister. It was a very difficult time for us. And uh, I'm happy to have a very supportive pastoral team, Pastor Rose and Pastor Jen, uh, who was very, very well there, there for me and my family in those times uh, of grief. And also for the leadership team here and the membership of Plantation. Uh, Elder Mo and the eldership team was there. Uh, Sister Angela, Elder Angela and the prayer ministry team. Elder Michael Adden and Dr. Hugh Allen um, from the men's ministries. I, I felt the love and the support and I just want you to know that um, we received it and we are grateful to all of you from my family. But I also want to thank my wife for being my strength when I was weak in those moments and also for my son who brought laughter in those moments of sadness. So God is good in all that God does. God surrounds us with the people we need for when we need them. Amen. 
So at Plantation here, you know that we are on a journey fulfilling the vision, the mission, to refocus on our purpose. And as a church, we have, we have, we have discerned that our purpose, as God, as outlined in God's word, is to love God, love each other, and to make disciples. So that's what we're about. And we try to engage in the cycle uh, of fulfilling our purpose by engaging in our discipleship process, which we connect, we grow, we serve, and we go um, into the community and do God's will. So for this quarter, we are focusing on, we are in, the, 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 in our discipleship process, we are on the dimension of growth, uh, of serving rather, of serving, where we engage and serve each other and our community. And for this month of July, we are focusing on health, and so our major, our major ministry event is our health fair, and you, you've been hearing about it, and you will continue to hear about it because it's us being God's hands and feet in the community. We need all of you. We need volunteers. Please sign up. There's a desk outside. Sign up. Go online. Find some way. Contact one of your pastors. We, we, we want you. We want you to be involved as we serve the community um, in this health fair. So this month we are talking about my body, God's temple. A recognition that who we are and what we are as human beings, this body belongs to God and we ought to honor it and be responsible stewards of it um, as, as a gift from God. But I want to focus on something that is important uh, in health which is often overlooked and that is our mental health, right? Our mental health. And uh, I'm going to engage it as always from the Word of God and see how we can be, be fitted and, and helped by the Word of God today. And this word is from the Gospel according to St. John chapter 14, verses 25 through 27, and it reads like this. I have said these things to you while I am with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my power, in my stead, in, as my representative, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. That's the word of God. And my sermon is entitled, Peace Like No Other. Pray for and with the preacher as we enter into God's words. Lord, we pray that your spirit will be upon each of us that truly you will move among us, you will break us, you will make us, that we can be sound and healthy. As for me, I stand with the assurance that the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because you have anointed me to preach, and so as I preach this word today, feed your sheep through me, in Jesus' name, amen. I, I saw one of my very good friends also from uh, Maranatha SDA Church, Sister Sophia Watt. She, she is somewhere around. I want to send um, thank you to you for being here with us today in worship. So, Jesus, in this passage of scripture, it ends with an admonition. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. I mean, that's, that's a good word of encouragement. Uh, don't, be, don't let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. But you and I know that some of us right now in this very sermonic moment, we are, our bodies are here but our minds are somewhere else. We are troubled in mind, body, and spirit. And you know, when trouble comes, there are two false prophets that comes 
with trouble. And they speak to us in those moments of mental distress. One false prophet, a preacher says, is anxiety. Anxiety says, worry about everything. Worry about everything. I got to do this, I got to do that. They said this, they said that. Worry about everything. And then there's the other false prophet, depression, who says, care about nothing. I'm done. Leave me alone. Lock myself off from the world. When trouble comes, we find ourselves, we, we, we hear these voices of these two false prophets speaking to us, worry about everything or care about nothing. And when we find ourselves in that space, we, we, we are in mental distress. We, we find ourselves in a place that we can't cope with life. And as anxiety is speaking to us, some of us says, well, since I have to worry about everything, I'm going to take this in my own hands. And I'm going to fix this problem. I'm going to fix that problem. And then we're burnt out. We can't do it on our own. But then there is depression who says, care about nothing. And I'm in my dark moment and I lock myself from the world and I'm drowning in bitterness. I'm angry with the world. And then our Christian lives diminish. We can't flourish. Problems come and fear comes and then comes the false prophets speaking in our ears. Worry about everything. Care about nothing. But if you are like me and some people... You, you, you turn to some other people for news, for, 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 for guidance. And my young people, we turn to the prophets of TikTok. What is TikTok saying and how can it help me? We turn to the prophets of Instagram and Facebook and YouTube to hear what these people are saying and, and how can I deal with my fear, my anxiety, my depression. We turn to these places. And then we find that they can't help us. Well, well, you know, to be truthful, my false prophet is the news. I love to watch the news because when you listen to, th to some of these commentators, they're very knowledgeable and they're skilled. And, and, and when they talk, they give you hope. I was listening the other day and this guy was talking about inflation. I'm like, I'm not, I, I mean, it's difficult, but I'm not worried. He said it's, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay because he said it. And I believe in the news. But how many times, beloved, you know, one of the reasons I engage with the news is because not just to learn what happened in the past or what, what's happening right now, but because I'm looking to, for some hope about the future. Because they tell us, because of these decisions, we, we expect that the jobs market will, in, will increase and, and, and depression will go down and all of these kind of things. And I believe them because it's the news. But, but how many times have yesterday's news projections proven unreliable for today's realities? And how many times today's news projections are found futile for tomorrow's expectations? You see, that's the problem, brothers and sisters. All of what I described a while ago is, is, is what I call the peace of the world. You see, the peace of the world, it is situational. And here's what I mean when I say the peace of the world is situational. It is based on the current state of affairs. You know, I like the beach. And when you go to the beach, when the wind is not blowing too much, it's calm. And the tide is calm and you can have a, a good day at the beach. But when the winds start blowing, it gets rough. Sometimes our lives are like that. It's calm when the winds of trouble are not blowing. But the moment the winds of trouble come, then we are like the, the, the sea, the, the, the waves of the sea tossed to and fro, unbalanced and unstable because we are depending on the peace of the world. 
And the peace of the world, it is situational. It says, I, I can be at peace when there is no problem. And so, when anxiety speaks to us, when, when depression speaks to us, when these false prophets are, are bellowing in our minds, how do we come to a place of stability, a place where we can stand firm? And that's why Jesus says, when he's talking to his disciples, he's going away. And his disciples are fearful that they can't live without him, which rightly so. Because he stood up for them protected them and secured them in many circumstances and so they are worried and Jesus knows they are, he's going away and, he, and, and he's saying to them listen I give you peace but I do not give you as the world gives because Jesus knows that the peace of the world is unstable and unreliable it is built on the circumstance, the, the current state of circumstances. But Jesus says, hallelujah, help me now. Jesus says, I do not give you as the world give. I give you my peace. Oh, help me, Jesus. My peace. Now, 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 now you, gotta, you can't miss that thing. You got to hold it very, very gently and, and dearly. Jesus says, that, I give you my peace. Now, the quality of the peace that Jesus possessed was such that it, 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 it helped him through, through his life and ministry on earth. Jesus describes it as something that he himself possessed and experienced. Now, when you get wisdom, you take it. And the peace that Jesus possessed, it is a kind of peace that kept him from, from Mary's womb to Joseph's borrowed tomb. It is a kind of peace, knowing that when he left the throne room of heaven, he would hang on Calvary's cross. It is that kind of peace that would keep him asleep in the midst of the storm. It's that kind of peace who would ha have him hung on a criminal's cross, uh, buried in a borrowed tomb, uh, but raised on Sunday morning. Can I tell you about the peace that Jesus possessed? Jesus possessed a kind of peace and, and uh, they, they call it the shalom peace and Pastor Mike just gave me a brief lesson not too long ago on, on shalom peace. I can't give you all the lesson but one dimension of the shalom peace is that the shalom peace it is not dependent on the absence of problems but on contentment in the midst of problems. Uh, are you hearing me church of God? Uh, the, the peace of God is not dependent on the absence of problems, but it gives you contentment in the midst of problems. This is the kind of peace that we need, brothers and sisters. When anxiety says to us, worry about everything, when depression says to us, care about nothing, what we need is the peace of God, the shalom peace that kept Jesus Christ. Can I tell you briefly about the shalom peace? When you have the shalom peace, you can enjoy goodness, but you can endure hardships. You see, when you have the shalom peace, you can enjoy the sunshine, but you can also endure the rain. When you have the shalom peace, you can enjoy the abundance of supply and endure the lack of resources. When you have uh, the shalom peace, you can enjoy the benefits of success, uh, but you can endure the fear of failure. When you have uh, the shalom peace, you can enjoy the pleasures of health, uh, and you can also endure the pain of sickness. Uh, when you have uh, the shalom peace, uh, you can enjoy the happiness of relationships, uh, and you can enjoy the brokenness of connections. When you have uh, the peace of God, you can enjoy the blessings of God and endure the temptations of the devil. What we need is shalom peace. Jesus says, I'm not giving you the world's peace because it's unreliable and unstable. But my peace, brothers and sisters, when you have my peace, you will be fine. You can balance, you can live with contentment in the world. In the good times and in the bad times, you can have a, a good mental space. The peace of God says, inflation is up. My pay, my pay rate, my pay rate hasn't gone up. But I'm going to praise God because my God will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. 
Ah, my, my, my God, this peace, this peace, brothers and sisters, when pain and sickness rocks our body, my God, my, my, my peace, the peace of God says to us, uh, yes, pain may be in my body and it may be rocking me, but yet though he slay me, yet will uh, I praise him. The peace of God says, brothers and sisters, when somebody steps on my toe, I don't tell you um, what the color of your eye is, uh, but I go to my knees uh, and I pray for you. The peace of God, beloved. It's not TikTok. On a YouTube. Oh, it's, it's not Instagram. It is the word of God which tells us the peace of God brings a certain kind of stability, e equilibrium, and balance in our lives. That's what we need. Uh, well, preacher, that sounds good. I mean, I like the peace that you describe, but how do I get it? Well, Jesus tells us. Jesus says, I am going away, but the advocate... The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in, not McCoy's name, uh uh. But in my name, in my authority, in my power, in my character, with my attributes, the Holy Spirit will do two things will teach you all things and remind you of all things that I've told you. So, you know. Jesus wants us to have the Spirit in us, to do two things. For the Spirit to fulfill two things, and, and the first is the Spirit teaches us. For those who are unaware of this peace, the, 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 the Spirit says, listen, look to the Word of God, look to the Holy Spirit, look to Jesus, because when you can't find peace in the world, there is one who can give you peace, and that is Jesus. When you have a relationship with him, you can find contentment in your life. That's the teaching piece. But then there is the reminding piece where the Holy Spirit reminds us of everything that Jesus had taught. Now the Holy Spirit, Jesus had been teaching his disciples. And in that moment, they were fearful and filled with anxiety and depression. These two, you know, when I was growing up, I used to see this, this cartoon thing. And most of it was in Tom and Jerry. You don't know what Tom and Jerry is, right? Um, Tom and Jerry, they used to have these two little things coming up on, on, on their shoulders. One in a, with a white, you know, and, and wings representing a good angel. And one on the left with a red fork and a tail and thing, you know. And they're whispering. Have you seen, have you ever seen that? Depression and anxiety are like that. But they're on the same side. Speaking in your ear. Telling you things. But in those moments, Jesus says, the Holy Spirit will remind you when you forget. So sometimes those of us as, who, are, who are members of the church of God for a while, we forget what it's like to find peace in our hearts. We forget what it's, what it's like to feel at oneness with God and with each other. And so Jesus says, if you want this peace, you've got to have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost has got to dwell in you. And through the Holy Spirit, you will experience peace. That's why the songwriter said, over or me, Holy Spirit, bathe my trembling heart and brow. Fill me with uh, thy hallowed presence. Come, oh come, and fill me now. What we need is the Spirit of God to bring peace in our hearts. The, the Spirit of God to bring tranquility, equilibrium, contentment, peace in our mind. Okay, so the Spirit does two things. Teach and remind. But we have to open our hearts to the Spirit's guidance. We have to invite the Spirit in so the Spirit of God can do the Spirit's work in teaching us and reminding us. And today, I just want to avail myself for a little bit. For the Holy Ghost to use me in the ministry of reminding. I just want the Spirit to use me right now in the, in, in, the, in the ministry of reminding. And I want to remind you about something that Jesus said to his disciples. 
Here's what he said in, in John 16, verse 33. Are you ready for this? I have told you these things so that you may have peace. Now, Jesus is telling something. He told us some things because he wants us to have peace. And here's what he says next. In this world, you will have trouble. Jesus says, I'm telling you something, and I told you some things because I want you to have peace. But here's the first thing I'm saying to you after that. In this world, you will have troubles. You know, when I got baptized in a, a young, vibrant young man in the church, I felt like one of the Avengers. Man, I, I felt like I had the strength of Hulk and Thor in one. Strong. I felt like I could, I could endure anything. Because I'm not a Christian, that's it. Thanks be to God, I'm good. No problems, easiest Sunday morning, it's a bed of roses. But that's when the trouble came. Troubles here, troubles there, and troubles everywhere. Jesus says it's for certainty that while you are in this world, you will have troubles. So don't tell me that you have troubles. Jesus says you will have troubles. Ask me, instead of telling me that you have troubles, ask me, Pastor, where can I find peace? And I will tell you. Jesus says, in this world, you will have troubles, but take courage. Oh, no, 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 no. Jesus says, take courage. Find strength. Engage life with a kind of boldness, without fear, for I have overcome the world. The world in which you live and it's filled with troubles each and every day, I have overcome that world. That's what Jesus says. Ella Fred, I know I'm going to have some good days and some bad days. I know trouble is going to come. I know it's going to be some hard times and some difficult times. I know sickness is going to rot my body. I know financial problems will arise. I know that disagreements will arise in relationships. I know, but there's one thing I also know, that Jesus has overcome my troubles. Jesus, he is the prince of peace. Jesus can give me peace that is like no other. Can I tell you? Peace that is like no other. I know there are going to be some tough days, some challenging days, but Jesus says, I have already overcome the world. In other words, whatever you think you're going to experience, I already have the solution. All you got to do is come to me. Peace like no other. Yes, when Jesus declared that he had conquered the world, here's what Jesus was saying. The devil is the prince of the world. That's what Jesus called him. He was ruling this world. But the moment I went to Calvary's cross, the day I went to Calvary's cross, knowing my destiny, that on the lowly hill of Golgotha, I would lay down my life for plantation for those online. That's the day the devil lost the battle. And from that day on, we are all victors. We are more than conquerors in Jesus who loved us. Ain't no problem, ain't no trouble, ain't no burden that you can't bear when you have the peace of Jesus because he gives you a peace that is like no other. The devil, his rule ended. We were reconciled to God. Tranquility came to our mind when Jesus overcome the devil. I don't know about you, but sometimes I talk to myself when I'm in those moments of troubles and trials, I said to myself, I talked to myself and I said, Preacher, why are you so worried? Why are you fearful? Why are you depressed? Why are you troubled? Why are you so anxious? And in those moments, you know, sometimes people say, I say to myself. But in those moments when I'm talking to myself, another voice comes in and says, Preacher, 
the reason you are in this mental predicament or distress is because you have done one thing you have forgotten you have for remember the holy spirit comes to teach and to remind and so in those moments all i do is open my mind when i can't find peace when anxiety is speaking in one ear and depression is speaking to another all i do is open my heart and my mind my body and my being to the power of the holy spirit and then i hear the voice of jesus saying peace that is like no other peace that is like no other so let me tell you brothers and sisters when you find yourselves in those moments in the dark depths of the present and you just can't get out all you've got to do is to cry out to Jesus and he will give you peace that is like no other when you're in those moments of busyness and anxiety has you going up and down like a crazy person all you've got to do is open yourself to God and he will give you peace that is like no other and he will bring calmness and to your soul and comfort to your soul hear me beloved let us turn our ears away from the false prophets of anxiety and depression and open ourselves to the powerful prophetic spirit and presence of God. Because when God's spirit is with us, we can end your peace. Amen. Pastor Rose, I don't have your, your, your sweet baritone, sir. I don't have it. Pastor Jen, I don't have your melodious uh, I'm alto. But I'm going to do what I can do. No, 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 hold on. Don't, don't, don't get your hopes up yet. Don't, don't, don't get your hopes up yet. I ain't going to preach. I'm going to sing rather. I'm going to preach. There's a hymn in our hymnals. And uh, the day I found this pastor, Mike, was a joy to my soul. And I want to just read it for you. <laughs> pastor, it says, Prince of Peace. Control my will. Let this struggling heart be still. Bid my fears and doubtings cease. Hush my spirit into peace. Thou hast bought me with thy blood. Open wide the gate to God. Peace I ask, but peace must be Lord in being one with thee. May thy will, not mine be done. May thy will and mine be one. Chase these doubtings from my heart. Now thy perfect peace impart. Savior, at thy feet I fall. Thou, my life, my God, my all. Let thy servant happy be. One forevermore with thee. Oh. If we can only open our hearts to the Spirit, if we can only open our hearts to the influence and the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, anxiety, who says worry about everything, depression, who says care about nothing, they will have to hush their voices. Hush their voices. As the Spirit speaks to us because our God gives us a peace that is like no other. Peace that is like no other. While the world says, the peace I give you is dependent on the absence of problems, Jesus says, the peace I give you keeps you in the midst of problems. Beloved, I give you the peace of God that is like no other.
like no other Hope like no other Reaches to me In the fullness In the fullness of experience the peace of God misery mental distress and then there are those who know what it's like but have forgotten but thanks be to God the Spirit comes the Spirit teaches those who don't know so is there anyone in this congregation who have not yet experienced the peace of Christ you don't know what it's like to find balance between your problems and peace Jesus has come I can give you peace that is like no other is there anyone in this congregation like that you don't know what God's peace is like if you're online on our website you go there there's a, there's, a, there's a tab next step when you go there click on that put in your information for Bible study for pastoral visit for prayer whatever you need we are here to help you find that peace through Christ but then there are those of us who we know what the peace is like but sometimes we're so overburdened, so overwhelmed, so, so distressed that we forget that God can, can bring us peace. If you're here this moment and you find yourself struggling with anxiety and depression, first, seek out professional help. Seek out professional help. Let's talk to a counselor, talk to somebody, it's good. But also, more importantly, come to Jesus. If you're in this congregation, you know what it's like when you are forgotten and you're mentally stressed. The Holy Spirit can remind you. Just open your heart to the Spirit. So if, so if you don't know, the Spirit can teach you. If you're forgotten, the Spirit will remind you. Whoever you are, the Spirit has something for you. So come. Come. Are you in this congregation right now? Wanting peace. If you are, just raise your hand. Come to the altar. However the Spirit is leading you. As a praise team raises their voice in this song. In the fullness. In the fullness of your This is your moment. Come. In the power of your name. You lift me up. If you're online, go to the tab. If you're in the congregation, raise your hand. Come to the altar.
Loving God, we thank you that amidst the false prophets of anxiety, depression, we can still hear the voice of your spirit clear to us, teaching us the truths that the only way we can find peace is in a relationship with you, reminding us when we forget to come back to you as a Prince of Peace. Today we find ourselves on one of these spectrum, one of these scales, but we come to the same Holy Spirit. We come to the same God who is able to give us peace that is like no other. I pray for your children who have come to the altar. You know what's on their heart, what is in their mind. May you give them peace that is like no other, peace that only you can give. And for those who are in the congregation, those who are online, may all of us experience a peace that is beyond understanding and comprehension. And may that peace bring us into a saving relationship with you. It's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
yes you are yes you are yes you are you are you are good all the time and all the time you are good you are good all the time and all the time you are good you are good all the time and all the time you are stream today. We hope that you are blessed. We hope that if you are in need of more uplifting content, that you will go over to our media page, plantationsda.tv. If you would like to enter a prayer request or a praise report, we ask you to go over to our church website, plantationsda.org. And if you're ever in the Plantation, Florida area, we encourage you to come on over and worship with us here. Until then, vaya con Dios.